going to give us a great show tonight. That's right. Both both schools are going to put a, a bunch of class kids on the field. We know these Perry kids, they have a lot of class. Coach Mark Bates has groomed them for the last three years over – what he's trying to accomplish here, and they're finally in, going in the right directions. Coach Steve Grother, a hometown product. In fact, both coaches, John, are hometown products of both teams, and they've got both schools going in the right direction, directions where they haven't been in the past. Right. Well, let me take this time, Buck, to remind the folks here in Perry, this is our first broad, uh, broadcast, TV broadcast of a Perry game. Remind them that their sponsors are threefold here in Perry for this game. That's Mr. C's. That's actually Mr. Convenience. We just refer to them as our good friends, Mr. C's. They're located at the corner of 15th and Highland. They're one of our great sponsors. The Comeback Cafe, located downtown on the North Square, one of the finest restaurants in the state, is another one of our sponsors. And Cowboy Kids down at Stillwater. We'll be interviewing uh, the Finleys who own uh, Cowboy Kids. We'll be interviewing them at halftime. Tell you more about it but we want to thank our great sponsors so as the captains are on the field perry has won the coin toss and elected to defer to the second half perkins will receive on the north end zone perry will kick from the south end zone we hope you'll stay tuned we've got a great football game coming to you tonight right here in perry oklahoma it's the demons of perkins and the maroons of perry we'll be back after these short messages Mr. C shows their pride in the Perry Maroons every day at the corner of 15th and Fur. Mr. C's, where easy access, quick service, and a great staff of friendly employees provide quality products. Fill up 66 gasoline from 12 pumps. Great fresh food from the deli, from snacks to dinners, including their famous roasted chicken and succulent barbecue ribs. Even a First Bank of Perry ATM. From magazines and milk to cold drinks and Perry Maroon pep rallies, you'll find it all at Perry's number one convenience store. 24 hours a day, Mr. C's, where Perry Pride is number one. Murphy's has sold China, housewares, gift, and bath items to Oklahoma since 1926. With the largest china and crystal display in Oklahoma, complete housewares and cookware selection, and thousands of gift ideas, Murphy's has something for every home. Buying across the country, selling around the world, Murphy's uses the latest internet and computer technology to offer our Oklahoma customers the best selection at competitive prices. Visit Murphy's seven days a week in the store or 24 hours a day online and see what the Murphy's team has in store for your family. Downtown Stillwater, Murphy's since 1926. So here come both teams onto the field and we're a minute 20 away from kickoff. Perkins comes into the night's ball game with a number eight ranking in the state. Perry is unranked, but both teams are undefeated in class 2A district five. Perry has not been to the playoffs in a long time. John, I tried to research their history and find out when the last time they had a chance to win a district was and several people said don't ask. So we know it's been a long time, but they certainly feel like they've got the kids to do it and we're glad we're here to see if they can try because if they don't, they've got a long road ahead of them. They got the top four teams left in the district and a good way to get that started is with a victory tonight. Well, we might mention that uh, actually the schedules for these two teams are in complete reverse. If anything, Perry started off with the easier schedule and Perkins started off with the most difficult schedule. But the telling point right now is this game tonight. This will tell us more about the remainder of the season than anything else. It's an important win for both teams. It's a must win for both teams. Both of them now undefeated in uh, district play and it's going to be a great game. I'm, I, I'm not going to be able to say that enough tonight. It's going to be a fine demonstration of football here at Perry Daniels Field tonight. Well, history tells us, John, that a team that finishes four and three in district may get into the playoffs fairly easy, but this is not the case in this district. We could have three or four teams four and three, and it's going to come down to tiebreaker points. Perry's been fortunate in their first three games that they've gotten the maximum points allowed, which is 15, and they do lead the district in that category margin of victory. And the tough games we've seen Perkins play, the tough games over uh, Pahuska and Pawnee are still on the books for the, uh, the Perry Maroons in the re remainder of this season. I think Pawnee's next week, as a matter of fact. But anyway, we're about ready for kickoff, Buck. We're ready for kickoff. Teeing it up for the Maroons is number one, Victor Atkinson. Back deep for the Perkins Trying Demons is number 10, Eric Mills. And number 20, Luke Spence. Mills will fumble the punt. He'll go into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Well, uh, Victor's uh, had a foot. Uh, we, we've seen him kick before. He's got a great foot, and he put it down there. Eric did the wise thing. Eric says, let's don't start off the game here. 
Uh, let's just put it down and let's get ready to go at the 20. Here they go. So we're going to find out right here early in the ball game what Perkins intends to do. Last week we saw him with a pretty unbalanced attack with a running game, and we saw the Puska game. They threw the ball a lot and put a lot of points on the board. So well, we'll I think we're going to see the same kind of game we saw last week out of Perkins. I believe they're going to stick with what did them well in that Pawnee game. At quarterback, Ken McBride, still at quarterback for the Maroons. He pitches to Spence over the left side. He's met at the line of scrimmage, breaks a tackle, picks up three yards well, on the Well, he couldn't turn the corner. Uh, Justice, uh, Curtis Justice was the first Maroon out there. He tripped him up, and then he banged into the group out there. He could not turn that corner, and that's something that the uh, both teams have got to be able to do tonight with those fast backs. They've got to be able to turn that corner. How about that football score last Saturday, John? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, what was your prediction? 34? 34-17. 34-17. I was what closer happened? than you hey, were, wasn't well, I? Well, what happened to the Texans? They didn't quite get that 17, did they? No, they didn't. <laughs> Handoff goes up the middle to number 20, Luke Spence again. He's near a first down. Ball's going to be placed on about the Perkins 30-yard line. Well, everybody was up there, including White Shoes, Russell Caldwell. He's on the defense right now for the Perry Maroons, and he's the one you want to keep your eye on, number 33. He's playing defense right now for the Maroons, but I expect to see him in the fullback position tonight sometime, if not right off the bat. He's a good runner. In fact, I think he was the leading rusher last year. 11, Mobley. Split wide right along with Mills. Handoff goes to Luke Spence up the middle. He's met the line of scrimmage, and the Maroons make the first big play of the ball game, John, with a defensive stop early in the game. Well, this looks just like last week, uh, Buck. Uh, we're watching two teams try to get through the middle, and so far, of course, we've uh, just seen uh, Perkins, but there's no room there to run, so we'll find out now. They're going to they're gonna keep testing that middle, but they're going to keep working on that end, too. They've got to get around that end. Fourth and short it. early in the game. John Perkins has lined up to go for it, and Perry's going to quickly call a timeout as they had their punt return on the field. Well, so, I, I think, uh, Buck, I think that was, uh, I don't think anybody was going to punt. <laughs> I don't you know it. what's going to happen. Yeah, I know exactly what. No, no play. play. No well, play. That's the call. Since there's not going to be a play, <laughs> we'll come back after this timeout. We've got 10-24 left in the first quarter. Still no score. For 74 years, generations of Oklahomans have enjoyed one of the state's best eating places, the Comeback Cafe in Perry. At the same location on the town square since day one, you can enjoy breakfast, lunch, or dinner. From large fluffy pancakes to flame-cooked steaks, from oversized char-grilled hamburgers to original recipe Mexican food, generations of Perry Maroons have enjoyed the great food at the Comeback, and you will also. Make your selection for the vast menu or the posted daily specials. The friendly staff is ready to serve you the delicious cooking of the famous Comeback Cafe. Mr. C shows their pride in the Barry Maroons every day at the corner of 15th and Fur. Mr. C's, where easy access, quick service, and a great staff of friendly employees provide quality products. Fill up 66 gasoline from 12 pumps. Great fresh food from the deli, from snacks to dinners, including their famous roasted chicken and succulent barbecue ribs. Even a First Bank of Perry ATM. From magazines and milk to cold drinks and Perry Maroon pep rallies, you'll find it all at Perry's number one convenience store. 24 hours a day, Mr. C's where Perry Pride is number one. Well, it's a fourth down play for Perkins. We don't know what they're going to do yet, but it looks like they're going for it on short. It's a fourth and a one, so it looks like early in the game, they're going to test their medal. Quarterback sneak, Ken McBride. He's close to the first down. It may be close enough for the measurement. Referees are going to stop the clock. It may be close enough. They're not going to measure. Or not close enough. <laughs> Man, big first down, big decision for the Perkins coaching staff, realizing how important this game is to them and their to the, to themselves and the program at Perkins. Well, uh, Buck, one of the things here, uh, Coach Grother would tell you the same thing. Uh, they've got to act fearless, even if they're not. But they, these guys are fearless. We, we've seen Perkins play, and both teams are going to do that all night. McBride rolls to his left. No one to throw to. He'll tuck it. Won't get anywhere. As number 36, Eric Mosier is there to make the tackle for the Maroons. Well, so was uh, Big 72, Jacob Hager. And by the way, I don't know where you saw Sooner Illustrated this week or not, but uh, the, in Sooner Illustrated this week, uh, Jake Hager has committed to the University of Oklahoma. He's been touted all year, and he will go to the University of Oklahoma. That's great news for Sooner fans. Jacob's a big fella. He's one of the bigger fellows out there and uh, quite a ball player for the Perry Maroons. The Sooner Illustrated also said he's blocked a kick in every game this year. Second down and 10. McBride takes the handoff to Spence. He's no one to throw to, and number 64, Jeff Connect, gets upfield in his order to 
able to tackle Ken McBride for a two-yard loss on the play. Well, Jeff, Jeff said his sights on McBride early, coming around that other side. He said, no, I'm going to chase him all the way. And McBride was looking for someone to help him, and it just wasn't there. McBride pulled down. Now, this is one of the things here. Uh, uh, both these guys are playing on their tiptoes. Both teams are playing on their tiptoes right now. They're setting high. Both teams playing with a lot of emotion. Third and 11, McBride back to pass, looking over the middle. No one there. Number 80, Curtis Justice comes through unblocked and gets the quarterback sack. It's going to be fourth and long this time, John, and I bet they punt it now. Well, I, I, I guarantee you this is not a time to be fearless now, but uh, you bet. Old uh, Curtis Justice, one of the tallest maroon players, was in there real fast, and he shut that play down. Victor Atkinson, a big play threat, back deep to receive the Maroons. On to punt for Perkins is number 10, Eric Mills. They nearly get it, not quite enough. It's going to be a short kick, takes a demon roll, and is going to roll dead at the 40-yard line. So we've got 8.04 left in the first quarter. We still don't have a score. Perry will come back with their first possession of the ball game after these messages. Follow the crowd to the hot spot in Stillwater, Cowboy Kids, the place for running, jumping, tumbling, and just plain having fun. Classes are available for aerobic kickboxing, taekwondo, cheerleading, and tumbling. Cowboy Kids has even more like a dollar chance and a daycare for children five years old and up. It's also a great place for birthday parties and parents. There's a waiting area just for you. So come be a Cowboy Kid at the corner of Airport and Perkins Road in Stillwater. Where do you start your morning every day? It should be at the Whistle Stop. At the Whistle Stop, you can pick up your morning paper and get a free cup of coffee from 6 to 8 every morning. Then you can come back for lunch and enjoy a fresh slice of Simple Simon's Pizza or choose from one of their many deli items. Plus all the usual, such as refreshing fountain drinks and plenty of snacks to get you through the day. Whistle Stop, two locations in Perkins and one in Morrison. Whistle Stop, proud supporters of high school athletics. And the Maroons take over their first possession of the ball game on their own 40-yard line. Number one, Victor Atkinson at quarterback, turns fakes to the fullback, keeps it himself, goes around the right end for a short gain on the play. Well, this is the thing those fast linebackers are down there now. And of course, we have to give credit, as we did last week. Your linebackers are only as good as that down line. And that down line for uh, Perkins has shown their stuff, the metal, and they're going to, they, that's what they're setting up now. They said, let's prove that we've got a defense here also. We haven't seen anybody run on them all year. I don't know why we should expect anything different tonight. That's right. Atkinson hands off to Vester. He goes up the middle. They're having a hard time bringing him down. Still no whistle. Finally, a whistle comes in. I didn't know if that play was ever going to end. I didn't think so either. And I saw Lee Madden line up in the backfield. I was trying to catch the other number. I don't know where Russell's in there or not. But they've got Lee Madden in the backfield with Deion Vester. Somebody else. Yeah, Russell, I believe, is in the backfield right now. White Shoes Caldwell. Well, they're in a power eye formation. We haven't seen them play this year, but that's something new. We we may have seen them run that la little, last year a little bit in goal line situations, but they came out on their first two offensive plays in that set. So they've said, first two plays, we're going to try and run it right at you. One back in the backfield. That's Russell Caldwell. Atkinson drops back to pass. It's not there. He takes it around the right corner and picks up a big play for the Perry Maroons on third down. Well, that's the that's the threat right there, Victor Atkinson. If he ever gets around that side, either if he doesn't get around the end, he'll try to find the hole to go early. And once he gets that speed going, it's bye-bye. Uh, lucky they caught him that time. Well, he just ran out of room, I think. Otherwise, he may have uh, been able oh, to break the, a few tackles the there. Jam. In Perry. And Not White like Shoes Caldwell is lined up in the back. Full house backfield. Atkinson hands off to Vester. Not going to pick much up on that play. Now, Big Mobley was in there. Make sure he's playing that linebacker position. He was right in there for Perkins. Shut that play down. Short game. If you're, yeah, just, if you're just joining us, we're in Perry, Oklahoma for the Demons Maroon football game at Daniels Field. Historic Daniels Field, we might add. Well, it's historic for us. <laughs> Can you give us the history on that? No, I'll get that later. Third down and eight. Second down and eight. Atkinson up the middle. Quarterback keeper, and he's close to another Perry first down. 
Well, that's what we call razzle-dazzle, and that's what he did. He made a, a big hyphen out of that uh, fake and then kept it himself, and there was a hole there big enough to drive a truck through, and it moves the chains. Well, Perry's running a lot of misdirectional stuff right now, and it seems to be working. We haven't seen anybody run this well on their first possession of the game against Perkins this year. We have not seen it. Power eye formation. Handoff goes up to middle. Russell Caldwell on the carry for the Maroons. Picks up about seven. Well, I said both teams are going to come out and try to make a statement, and the Perry Maroons are doing it so far. Uh, that up on the offensive line, the offensive line is able to open up those holes for those fast running backs, and uh, all they're waiting is to break one. They don't have far to break it now. Number four, David Sharp, split to the left. Tight end is Curtis Justice, Dion Vester, the tailback. Handoff goes to Caldwell again, up the middle. And John Jacob Hager and that offensive line are taking care of that Perkins front right now. Well, he took two men that time with him, so... Uh, he's doing a good job in there. Russell Caldwell, we've seen him where he called that he might be running, and he certainly is, and made good yardage on that play. The Maroons are the Maroons were uh, making a statement, like I said. They, you know, they both teams have got to do that, and they came out and said, well, "Let's do it now. Let's don't waste any time. Let's get down there and get a score on this board." Two tight end formation. Handoff goes to Vester over the right side. He's not going to gain anything on the play. Be they second down and goal. Couldn't get around that end, and that's uh, of course that's one of the strong suits of uh, Perkins. Is you you're, you've got to really hustle to get around the end on those uh, fast linebackers. Two of the fastest linebackers I've seen. Big second down. I don't see an official timeout <laughs> on the field. But, well, I uh, saw him no. stop the clock, <laughs> but I don't know why. Number 88, Mason Bole split wide to the left. Victor Atkinson at quarterback, second down and goal. Hand off to Vester. He breaks several tackles. His feet's still moving. And that was a tough two yards right there. Well, it was very tough. And we, and, and we saw the same thing uh, last week. The, your back's trying to get up in there. And, when, you know, you, getting in a secondary is only half of the problem you've got with Perkins. Once you once you get past that offensive line, you get that secondary, they're going to close up on you real fast, especially down there in, in the red zone. They're going to close up real fast. Well, anytime but you, he, he any, turned for it. Anytime you run into big Josh Mobley in that defensive line at Perkins, if you break a tackle, you got to feel pretty fortunate. And Anthony Broussard's the one made that tackle for Perkins. Atkinson rolls to his right. Before he gets a chance to throw it, number 88, Jason Babb, is there to bring him down with his shirt, and Perkins comes up with a big play. Well, Jason had decided he, where he was going for the snap, and he was back there, and that's one of the strong suits. Now we've lost yards uh, for the Perry Maroons, and now they're going to have to go for the field goal. Who they got in there? Big Curtis Justice to kick that field goal. The it's going to be about a 27-yard field goal. It's a fake. Ryan Korn, the backup quarterback, keeps it. And a heads-up play by number 10, Eric Mills, as he tackles Korn before he barely gets past the line of scrimmage. Well, Ryan, uh, it, was a, it was a good set play for the Maroons. You know, hey, let's try something. And uh, just didn't get him there. Didn't get him there. So two Big things. Curtis has had a lot of success in his field goals. I don't know about that distance, but he's had a lot of success. Hindsight's 20-20, though. We got a strong wind at his back. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's something that you and I wouldn't have called, Buck, but they called it. <laughs> so it changes the complexion right now. Here goes the Perkins demon. Ken McBride at quarterback hands off to tailback Luke Spence. He goes over the left side for a gain of three. Well, big old uh, Eric Mosher, who is also a running back playing defense right now. Eric was there to, to manhandle the stop. How do you know I wouldn't call that? Uh, you wouldn't call it, Buck. That's, hey, that's way, that's way too conservative for you. <laughs> that might be the only time I'm ever conservative. You're no place. That's right. McBride fumbles the snap, picks it up, leans forward. He's actually going to pick up a couple yards on the play. <laughs> Our good friend Brody Schmidt with the uh, Stillwater News Press down there. I see him in the end zone down there. Came up and said he's equipment. We had a chance to talk to him. Patrick Prince is up in the press box to write the story for the Stillwater News Press, one of our leading newspapers in this area. Eric Mills and J Jeremy Mobley split to the right. Ken McBride at quarterback, third down and five. Quick pass to Mills. 
And that's a play, John, that's worked for him several times this year, but number one, Victor Atkinson was not fooled. Well, Buck, we, we say it's worked for him several times, and it has, but remember last week how many times they played that same play before it really got loose. And I, I think that's... I, I, I'll say it now, and I'll probably be saying it in the fourth quarter, Coach Grother is not going to change his game plan. He's going to just keep pecking away. Coach Bates is not going to change his right now. They're just going to keep pecking away. Mills to punt. Atkinson back to receive, standing on his own 45-yard line. Not a good kick. Good bounce. It's going to roll dead about the 47-yard line. So oh, both field. teams have had chances to run their offense in this first quarter, and neither one of them successful in getting points on the board. We've got a minute 15 left. We'll be back for the conclusion of the first quarter after this break. Mr. C shows their pride in the Barry Maroons every day at the corner of 15th and Fur. Mr. C's, where easy access, quick service, and a great staff of friendly employees provide quality products. Fill up 66 gasoline from 12 pumps. Great fresh food from the deli, from snacks to dinners, including their famous roasted chicken and succulent barbecue ribs. Even a First Bank of Perry ATM. From magazines and milk to cold drinks and Perry Maroon pep rallies, you'll find it all at Perry's number one convenience store. 24 hours a day, Mr. C's, where Perry Pride is number one. The history of the chicken fried steak. A Charlie's chicken film. Dust and coffee for breakfast. Jerky and dust for lunch. At last dusk, uh, twilight descends on the famished cowhands. Tonight, it's steak and biscuits. Cookie fires up the frying pan. Suddenly, the crankiest heifer in the herd charges cookie. Steak flies willy-nilly, skips through the biscuit batter and into the hot frying pan. Bingo, chicken fried steak. Mosey on order Charlie's chicken for this crowd pleaser. Charlie's Chicken Fried Steak Special, just $2.99. Charlie's Chicken, Chicken Fried Steak. Check it out. Back at Daniels Field, Eric, excuse me, Victor Atkinson rolls to his left, right, comes to his left, goes across the line of scrimmage, keeps it on his own. And, John, he's basically been their offense with the with the exception of the Russell Caldwell runs earlier in the game. Uh, true, and, and uh, one of the things we're seeing here tonight that we didn't see last week is field position. They're getting ready to cross that 50-yard line, uh, the Prairie Maroons, and all of the uh, all of the battle so far has been down in Perkins' territory. Perkins has yet to cross the 50 in their two possessions. Maybe the wind has something to do it with very that. Very well do. Atkinson hands off to Vester. He quickly gets through the line of scrimmage. Falls forward to gain about four yards on the play. Well, he's just, just going to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And uh, the, when you've got those two threats, just like Perkins, when you've got uh, Mills and Sells there, just keep running them, keep running them. Somebody's going to break one. And we sat down there and waited all week last week for somebody, either Pawnee or uh, Perkins, to break one, and finally it started. And it's going to start here in a minute. David Sharp split to the left, full house backfield. Atkinson's trying to draw the defense offside. It didn't work. They go ahead and snap the ball. Dion Vester up the middle, and he's going to pick up another Perry first down. John, he almost broke that one. Did. Buck, I, like I said, this is the first time I've seen Dion play this year. He looks twice as big as he did last year. This kid has been on the weights. He's put a lot of strength and hasn't lost any speed. He's going to be a good ball player. No doubt about that. Coach Bates and his coaching staff spent a lot of time in the offseason. I know they have a summer pride workout schedule, and I'm sure that they had a lot of participation from all their players. But we're at the end of the first quarter. Let me talk a minute here, Buck, about our good sponsors. Uh, we've got a bunch of good sponsors. Mr. C's is one of them right here in Perry. And all last week, I told you about going and getting your car wash. Well, <laughs> it didn't need much of a car wash today. But you can still do it. Go there tonight after the game. Well, anytime this week. Go there Saturday. And especially you Perry people who are hearing that announcement for the first time. It is that all you've got to do is go by Mr. C's anytime after this ball game and tell them you saw their commercial and they're going to give you that super $4 car wash absolutely free. So all you Perry people, be sure and get in there today or tomorrow and get your super car wash. We're at the end of the first quarter. As I mentioned earlier, we still have no score. Perkins coming out for their third possession of the ball game. John's the best field position they've had so far. Ball's sitting on their own 40-yard line. I was talking to our... And I made a mistake. It's still Perry's ball. Yes, there we go. <laughs> and while you were doing that, I was talking to our head honcho. Well, we don't have to mention his name, do we? Not yet, but soon. <laughs> Number 33, Russell Caldwell on the carry for the Maroons. He picks up six on the play. Bring up second down and four. In goes uh, 
Well, let's see here. I used to know all those numbers by heart, but in goes Mason Bolay with a play. And like you mentioned earlier, Buck, we have not seen Perry play out of this formation. We saw it a couple of times last year, like you said, down near the goal. But uh, it's Brainham's success, and they're going to stay with it. Bolay split to the right. Dion Vester gets the handoff from Atkinson, and he's going to be near another Perry first down. So, John, once again, they're not having any problems moving the ball against this defense. The problem is getting some points on the board. Well, you and I are surprised, but we're not half as surprised as uh, Coach Grother is over there that these Maroons are moving that ball and that uh, down lineman, through those down linemen, getting in that secondary, gaining yardage every time. One thing that this formation gives you is an extra blocker in the backfield. And I like That's it. A, I like the formation. Takes a lot of pressure off your offensive line. Number 11, Jared Miner split to the right. David Sharp on the left. First and 10. Caldwell up the middle. He's got, he's going to go untouched for the first points of the game. And Perry strikes first with 10.52 left in the second quarter. Well, I, I said it at the start. The, one of the keys to this game would be whether Russell Caldwell came into the backfield or not. Last year's leading gainer hasn't been running that much this year. And there he goes. And that's the same kind of runs he made last year. He's doing a great job. He did a great job that time anyway. And scored that six points for the Maroons. Swing and gate formation. Now they were just for the extra point. Number 80, Curtis Justice holding number eight. You think they'll fake Ryan it and go Corn. for two, Buck? No. All right. Kick is up. It's a low kick. It's off to the right. No good. But with 10.52 left, Perry gets on the scoreboard first. It's 6-0 to zero right here at Daniels Field in Perry, Oklahoma. We'll be right back. County Bank and Perkins has been serving the Perkins community for over 100 years. Since 1898, they put their expertise to work for their customers. With convenient drive through service and a great central location, Payne County Bank is there for you. And for the Perkins Tryon Demons, Payne County Bank 202 South Main, proud supporters of PT Athletics. Mr. C shows their pride in the Perry Maroons every day at the corner of 15th and Fur. Mr. C's, where easy access, quick service, and a great staff of friendly employees provide quality products. Fill up 66 gasoline from 12 pumps. Great fresh food from the deli, from snacks to dinners, including their famous roasted chicken and succulent barbecue ribs. Even a First Bank of Perry ATM. From magazines and milk to cold drinks and Perry Maroon pep rallies, you'll find it all at Perry's number one convenience store. 24 hours a day, Mr. C where Perry Pride is number one. We're back here getting ready now for the kick. I want to tell you about one of our other sponsors here from Perry. That's the Comeback Cafe. Buck, one of our favorite places. Somebody said I spend six hours a day in there. Must be on the payroll. But I'll tell you what, it, and it shows what I eat in there. I'll guarantee you some of the finest food. Well, they're one of our sponsors tonight. They're located on the north side of the mall, uh, square in Perry. I want you to visit them. Tony Lee and Mary Lee, or Tony and Mary Lee Macias, two fine people with a great restaurant. Over 74 years in the same location. Only two owners. It's home owned. It isn't one of those chain deals. It's great cooking. Mr. Uh, the Comeback Cafe. A little history there. That's the first, that's the only cafe, or the oldest cafe to be in this operation in the same location in the state of Oklahoma, I believe. Is that yeah, correct? You're right. You're right. It is. Number one, Victor Atkinson tees it up for the Maroons. Back to receive for Perkins is Luke Spence and Eric Mills. Kick's going to go to Spence at about the 15-yard line. He goes right up the middle and just keeps running until he gets all the way to the 40-yard line. Well, those that we have designated threats in the offense for both teams are now starting to show their stuff. Russell Caldwell takes a good gainer down to our good yardage, goes down and scores, and now Spence makes a good comeback here on the uh, kick, and uh, this game is, uh, is going to turn into an offensive battle. If anything, it's not going to be a defensive game here much longer. It's going to turn into everybody's going to be getting after it. Well, I said it earlier, Perry's out to receive some respect, not only from Class 2A-5 district, but from Class 2A himself. And, John, I guarantee you with that last last drive and their scoring touchdown, they're getting some respect. They not only got respect, but they just developed a whole lot of momentum, and now they have the ball on that fumble over on the other side. Uh, the, the Perry Maroons, are, are, they're making their statement. They're making it over and over and over. They'll get some respect out of this. Perkins has played so many tough games here early in district play that, you know, you kind of expected a letdown maybe sometime during the season. Tonight wasn't the night for it. Nope. Full house backfield, David Sharp to the right, Victor Atkinson still at quarterback for the Maroons. Handoff goes to Vester, and he's met at the line of scrimmage hard. 
Well, this, uh, you know, that was a big break for the Perry Maroons. Breaks will be an important part of this game. I thought uh, that we were going to be playing with a real wet ball tonight, and the breaks might determine us. But uh, still yet, the breaks are going to be an important part of this game. But I don't believe it's going to be the determining factor. I believe it's who can stand with their offense, who can stay with their uh, scoring. Boy, uh, who can keep those uh, players out there scoring? And that's what's going to turn this game around. But right now, the momentum is with the Perry Maroons. Jared Miner to the right, Sharp to the left. Dion Vester in the backfield with Russell Caldwell. Fake pitch. Victor Atkinson keeps it himself, and it doesn't work this time as number 55, Will Anderson, is there to knock him down for a short gain on the play. Well, it didn't fool some people, but it uh, he was out of position for the uh, defenders to get right off, and so he made some yards on that. But it, that is a, uh, we, I've never seen him do that before, and, and so I don't know where it's developed for this game or not. But anyway, it seems to work. It gets some yards. 30, That's Jason Rice brings the play into Victor Atkinson. He relays it to his teammates. Jared Miner splits to the right. Fakes a handoff to Atkinson, sets up to throw. He don't have time. Number 33, Justin Perkins, comes in quick from the right side and sacks Atkinson for about a four-yard loss. Yeah, he dropped, as you could see there, of course, he dropped the ball, but the ground was what, uh, he didn't drop the ball. The contact uh, with the ground was what squirted the ball away, so it's, it wasn't a recovered fumble. Perkins bounces back on defense, forces Perry to punt. Ball's placed on the Perkins 43-yard line. Curtis Justice on to punt. Eric Mills back to receive. But once again, Eric Mills did the right thing. He's smart back there. We've seen him sit back there by himself all year long. He's a smart ball player, and he decided this is not the time. We'll just take the ball right here, and we'll uh, behind the 10-yard line, and we'll just uh, try to make some offensive moves. Coaches cringe when that happens right there. Tell me about it. Ball's inside the 10-yard line. Perkins looking for their first sustained drive of the ball game. They did pick up two first downs on that first drive. They haven't done much since. Jeremy Mobley splits to the left. Spence and Jace call him in the backfield. Ken McBride still at quarterback. Pitch goes to Spence over the right side. He gets outside, gets his feet moving, breaks several tackles, and if it's not for Jared Miner, he goes the distance. Well, that's right. Jared was the only thing that saved six points right there. It's, uh, it, you know, when Spence gets to moving, he and Mills, when they get to moving out of that backfield, they're the same threat that Atkinson and uh, Vester are on the Perry team. So it's gonna, be, uh, we're gonna see this duel all night, and uh, we're gonna see it broken many times. One time, one player in the way of it being broken for a score there. First down and ten. Ken McBride fumbles a snap. He's hit as he fumbles it. And Perry recovers their second turnover of the ball game. Well, a big, another big break for the Perry Maroons. And with their momentum going, you know, it's just going to pump them up some more. They've got the best field position they could have down there on the 20-yard line. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, inside the 20, aren't they? Uh, just know. outside the 20. I don't know what the problem is with the center quarterback exchange there, but that's the third time it's happened here early in the first half. Uh, Perkins going to have to get that fixed, John. Yeah, there you are. Atkinson hands off to Caldwell. Same play he scored on earlier. He gets up the middle for a gain of six. Well, White Shoes does what he does best, and that just look for that hole right up the middle. He's real fast off the ball. And boy, once he gets that ball in his hands, he goes through there, and he gets through that. Uh, those four down linemen up there staring him in the face, and he almost made it in the secondary and gone again. But the Perry offense, or the Perry running backs, I should say, are well disciplined. They go where the hole is supposed to be, and they count on their teammates to open that hole up. So far, it's working. Mason Bole split to the right. Second down and four. Handoff goes to Dion Vester up the middle. He's going to be short of the first down. That discipline you're talking about, uh, Buck, is one of those things that uh, as we didn't see last year when we were doing the broadcast here. We saw uh, the other Atkinson, this Atkinson, and... Uh, uh, Vester looking for holes and dancing around there in frustration last year. Man, they've got some discipline this year. That, that hole has got to be there. Third down and four. Ball is resting on the Perkins 14-yard line. Handoff goes to Vester again up the middle. He's near a Perry first down. It appears that he's got it. Well, one thing, one thing that we're seeing in this game that we haven't seen in the prior 
Perkins game, as far as Perry is concerned, is how much faster their backs are hitting that front line. We watched some good runners in Pawnee and Pahuska, but they weren't anywhere near that fast in getting up to that line and getting it through that hole. The momentum is still with the Perry Maroons. Number 11, Jared Miner to the right, David Sharp to the left. Victor Atkinson changes up the play count. What do you and, call that? Well, I don't think it was no play. I think he just changed it from one to two. And those Perkins defenders bid on that one, and that's an easy five yards for the Maroons. 6.49 left in the second quarter. Perry on top, six to nothing, but threatening once again. Well, another mistake by the Demons that we're not used to seeing them make. And uh, they've got to correct those mistakes right now and uh, hope that Perry starts making some. You've got to get this, you have to get some balance in this game soon. Bole to the left, Miner to the right. Victor Atkinson under center. First down and five. Handoff goes to the first man through. That's Russell Caldwell. He's met at the line of scrimmage by a host of demons. Well, Russell, as he went through, there were two hands I saw come through there and grab one of these white shoes, and that held him up for a second. And then, of course, he was, when he came straight up, they pushed him back. So no gain on that. Be second down and five. Perry could actually get a first down. The ball is inside the five-yard line. They could get a first down at about the half-yard line. Handoff goes to Dion Vester, and he crosses the goal line, and Perry strikes again. Well, no matter where the first down is, it doesn't make any difference now. The Maroons put it in for another six points, and they take a, the, once again, they score and become the first ones to put points on the boards tonight. Oh, man, what a game this is going to turn out to be. 6.05 in the second quarter, Perry strikes again. Dion Vester on a four-yard run over the left side dives into the end zone, and the Maroon offense will go for two. Boy, this has been a fast first half here, Buck. We're only 6.05 away from the break, the yep. mid-break in this game, and the only score on the board are the Perry Maroons. David Sharp split to the left. Ackerson fakes the handoff, looking for someone to throw to, throws it to the back corner and out of the end zone, incomplete. With 6.05 left in the second quarter, Perry on top, 12-0. Where do you start your morning every day? It should be at the Whistle Stop. At the Whistle Stop, you can pick up your morning paper and get a free cup of coffee from 6 to 8 every morning. Then you can come back for lunch and enjoy a fresh slice of Simple Simon's Pizza or choose from one of their many deli items, plus all the usual, such as refreshing fountain drinks and plenty of snacks to get you through the day. Whistle Stop, two locations in Perkins and one in Morrison. Whistle Stop, proud supporters of high school athletics. For 74 years, generations of Oklahomans have enjoyed one of the state's best eating places, the Comeback Cafe in Perry, at the same location on the town square since day one. You can enjoy breakfast, lunch, or dinner, from large fluffy pancakes to flame-cooked steaks, from oversized char-grilled hamburgers to original recipe Mexican food. Generations of Perry Maroons have enjoyed the great food at the Comeback, and you will also. Make your selection for the vast menu or the posted daily specials. The friendly staff is ready to serve you the delicious cooking of the famous Comeback Cafe. Back at Daniels Field in Perry, Oklahoma, the Maroons on top, 12-0 over the heavily favored Perkins Trying Demons. 6.05 left in the first half. Victor Atkinson tees it up once again for the Maroons. Back to receive number 20, Luke Spence, and number 10, Eric Mills. Atkinson, left-footed kicker, is going to go short to Jace Collum. He catches it, goes around the outside, up the sideline near the 45, close to the 46-yard line. Well, you notice that Spence and Mills both were back that time, Buck, and they, you know, that's something different from what we've been seeing. And they want to make sure they get somebody's back there to get the ball. As we watched in the last two games, they'd kick away with Mills and, uh, when he was uh, the only back back there to return that ball. So they've taken advantage and they got two up front. So they want that ball. They want to kick someplace where they can get it. Well, this game's not quite like the Pahuska game, John, but it seems it's similar. It seems like Perry has just dominated this first half and Perkins hasn't been able to get anything going. And that's what happened to the Huskies when Perkins played them. That's it, true. Perkins dominated the first half, but they put 28 points on the board. 
Ken McBride pitches to number 20. Luke Spence over the left side. He's hit at the line of scrimmage by Russell Caldwell. Maybe falls forward for a short game. Well, Spence is going to be attacking those uh, ends all night, trying to turn the corner. That's what he does best, and we saw it, we've saw we seen him all season. Just attack it, attack it, attack it. Pretty soon it's going to catch up with somebody, and he's going to make a break there. Both of these teams are just living on breaks right now. Not that kind of break, the fast break from the fast players, the fast backs. That's what they're looking for. Cameron Carner split to the near side. McBride pitches to Spence. As he crosses the line of scrimmage, he's brought down by a host of Perry Maroons, one of them being number 60, Caleb Young. Up here in the booth with us, walked in as one of the Perry's alumnus to be with, visiting with at halftime, Brad Finley. I'll be visiting with him at halftime, talking about cowboy kids down in Stillwater. So stay tuned to halftime for that. We've got a lot of entertainment for you during that halftime period here at Daniels Field. Mobley and Mills split to the left with Jace Collum, 32. McBride back to pass, throws quickly to Collins. And number 80, Curtis Justice, a five, well, he's not 5'10". Let's go ahead and say how tall he is. He is 6'7", listed in the paper, 2'10". And, John, he's not only a factor on the football field, he figures to be a big factor on the basketball court this winter. Well, Curtis was 6'7 when they printed the program. I think he's grown a foot since then. <laughs> he is one of the taller Maroons, of course. Back to receive for the Maroons, Victor Atkinson. On to punt, Eric Mills. Directional punt away from Atkinson. It's going to bounce on the 25-yard line and roll dead on the 21-yard line. With 4.36 left in the first half, Perry on top, 12-0. And let me tell you about some of our good sponsors again. On the Perry side of this broadcast, let me tell you about Mr. C's. Easy access to the corner of 15th and Fur, And Perry, the big supporters of the Maroons. And let me tell all of you people from Perry that all you have to do tomorrow, today, after you hear this broadcast, is walk into Mr. C's and tell them you heard their commercial, and they're going to give you a free $4. That's Super Car Wars. Absolutely free. Uh, Mr. C's, home of the great chicken here in Perry. Atkinson hands off to Vester. He runs into that big defensive line of the Parkins Trines Demons, picks up two yards on the play. The Whistle Stop, one of our Perkins sponsors. Perkins Whistle Stop, free coffee in the mornings, two locations in Perkins, one in Morrison. Almost simple Simon's Pizza, deli items, and all the refreshments you need. So fill up your vehicle and yourself at the Whistle Stop in Perkins. Some other players on the field for Perkins. Number 70, James Mills. Number 48, John Plunk. A lot of players going both ways. Second down and seven. Atkinson fumbles the ball as he tries to hand it off to Russell Caldwell, and Perkins is going to recover their first, their first recovered fumble of the ball game. Well, it's their first big break of this game. Uh, Perry sitting down there and, and, you know, running the ball. And been doing it all night, it seems like, and uh, got the two scores on the board. And now a fumble, and, and uh, Perkins got a chance deep and down there in Perry territory to put some more uh, points on the board before the halftime, which is only 3.54 away. So Perkins takes over on the change of possession on the 23-yard line. Mills and Mobley split to the right, Bab to the left. Ken McBride sends Mills in motion. Handoff fake to Mills on the reverse. He's looking downfield for Mobley. He's covered by number 11, Jared Miner, and he just has to throw it away before he takes a loss. Well, uh, you know, when you look for somebody down that sideline, the first, first thing that happens is you get all the people standing there. I see Brody Smith, who I mentioned a while ago, our photographer, Brody had to back up because no one knew where that ball was going. It was de destined to be outside if it wasn't uh, a completion. He made it that way. McBride's a smart passer. Just nobody there that time. You know what he was most smart about? Do what? You know what he was most smart about on that play? Tell me about it. He didn't get hit. Well, that's true, too. Cameron Carner and Eric Mills split to the right. Jason Babb on the left. Mills in motion once again. This time the handoff to Luke Spence up the middle. Well-designed play as it fools the entire Perry defense. And, John, there's the big play we talked about earlier. Well, there it is. I mean, I, you know, you, we've seen it too many times. Uh, just like Vester and Atkinson, you just keep running with Spence, and, and sooner or later, he's going to fool you, and he's going to break through. Once he gets in that secondary, gets past those uh, initial linebackers, the man is gone. He can run with the best of uh, safeties back there. Of course, he didn't have far to run this time, but it's far enough for six points, and Perkins makes their first score of the night. Luke Spence goes 23 yards 
to put the first points on the board for the Demons. Number two, Bobby Holmes on to kick the extra point. And it's good. So with 3.41 left in the first half, Perkins gets on the scoreboard. They now trail the Maroons 12 to 7. Mr. C shows their pride in the Barry Maroons every day at the corner of 15th and Fur. Mr. C's, where easy access, quick service, and a great staff of friendly employees provide quality products. Fill of 66 gasoline from 12 pumps, great fresh food from the deli, from snacks to dinners, including their famous roasted chicken and succulent barbecue ribs. Even a First Bank of Perry ATM. From magazines and milk to cold drinks and Perry Maroon pep rallies, you'll find it all at Perry's number one convenience store. 24 hours a day, Mr. C's where Perry Pride is number one. Payne County Bank and Perkins has been serving the Perkins community for over 100 years. Since 1898, they put their expertise to work for their customers. With convenient drive through service and a great central location, Payne County Bank is there for you. And for the Perkins Trying Demons, Payne County Bank 202 South Main, proud supporters of PT Athletics. Three forty-one left in the first half. Perkins has just gotten on the scoreboard. Luke Spence on a 23-yard run has cut the Perry lead to five. And, John, those extra points that Perry didn't get could come back to haunt them. Well, they're, they're always big, you know, when you can't go back and pick them up. And when you lose them like that, yes, they're awful big, and sometimes they show up to be the number, biggest part of the game. Number two, Bobby Holmes on the kick for Perkins with the wind at his back. Back to receive is Atkinson and Vester. Kick's going to go to Atkinson, but it looks like it's going to go into the end zone. And in high school rules, anytime the ball crosses the plane in the end zone on a free kick, the ball is ruled a touchback and placed at the 20-yard line. While they're coming up, let me tell you about the Comeback Cafe, one of our Perry sponsors. I tell you about it all the time because it's one of my favorite cafes in the whole state. Tony Macias, Mary Lee Macias, going to a fine restaurant with some excellent food. Tonight, all I could do was handle the onion rings. Those onion rings. Why, they're as big as tires on cars down there, and delicious, I'm telling you. A small car, small car. I drive a small car. David Sharp to the right, full backfield. Handoff goes to Vester. He gets one block from 32. That's uh, Lee Madden. Good block by Lee Madden, and Dion is going to run all the way to the 37-yard line. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he was doing a lot of churning there. And I, I, those feet were just going straight up and down. He never he kept those feet moving. That's what you got to do just in case somebody got twisted over one of those legs. What a return. That zone play is a play that we saw a lot last year, and we can see they're still running it this year. Well, they, yep. When it, when it does you good, do it. If it do you right, do it more. Handoff goes to Russell Caldwell up the middle. He carries two tacklers with him. That's number 48, John Plunk, and number 32, Jace Collum, and he carries them almost 10 yards, picks up a Perry first down. Well, I'm glad we, I'm glad White Shoes is doing some good in there tonight because that was what we saw as their bread and butter last year mixed in with the Speedsters, but that little fullback, I mean, he runs well. He's a good running back for the Perry Maroons. He's, getting, he's doing something that Pawnee last week was unable to do with their big runners. What he does is he hits a hole quick, and when he hits it, He's off. Handoff this time goes to Dion Vester. He gets down near the 45-yard line. It'll be second down and eight. Well, Mobley and uh, let's pick it out here. John Plunk saved that play, moved into the position there. Those Eric Mills is playing that outside linebacker. Mobley's playing back at safety. Second down and eight, Atkinson hands off to Vester, gets a kick out block from Lee Madden, but it wasn't enough because number 88, the defensive end, Jason Babb, was out there to keep him from getting around the corner. Well, of co course, Coach Bates is after that corner. He's going to stay. He's going to attack that thing all night. That's the big feature of Atkinson and uh, Vester is that either one of them get around that corner. And Coach Grother over on the other side for Perkins has already stated that that's the thing he had to shut down. And his defense, he has uh, he has all the belief in the world in those outside linebackers to shut those corners down. And they did it at that time. Third down and eight. Sharp to the right. Justice and Minor to the left. 
quarterback draw by Atkinson. He gets through the first line of defenders, but he's not going to get through the second. Well, <laughs> Victor just kind of got lost in the crowd there. You know, there, there wasn't really a hole. He just kind of squeaked through there. Uh, the offense down lineman, I don't think, knew that he had the keeper play. Linebackers started moving up, but uh, he just kind of got lost in traffic. It's like walking through an elevator that's crowded. You just keep going. Well, it was a quarterback draw, and Victor probably didn't set it up as well as he should have as he just dropped back, faked a quick pass, and then took off and win. But it's going to bring up a fourth down play with 1.15 left in the fourth quarter. Perry trying to run out the clock. Perkins wants another chance. Atkinson at quarterback. Tries to draw the defense offside. It's not going to work. He's going to call a timeout. So as he takes this timeout, we're going to take this timeout with him. We'll be right back. Where do you start your morning every day? It should be at the Whistle Stop. At the Whistle Stop, you can pick up your morning paper and get a free cup of coffee from 6 to 8 every morning. Then you can come back for lunch and enjoy a fresh slice of Simple Simon's Pizza or choose from one of their many deli items. Plus all the usuals, such as refreshing fountain drinks and plenty of snacks to get you through the day. Whistle Stop, two locations in Perkins and one in Morrison. Whistle Stop, proud supporters of high school athletics. Follow the crowd to the hot spot in Stillwater, Cowboy Kids. The place for running, jumping, tumbling, and just plain having fun. Classes are available for aerobic kickboxing, taekwondo, cheerleading, and tumbling. Cowboy Kids has even more like a dollar tans and a daycare for children five years old and up. It's also a great place for birthday parties and parents. There's a waiting area just for you. So come be a Cowboy Kid at the corner of Airport and Perkins Road in Stillwater. We're back at Daniels Field to bring you the conclusion of the first half. We got one minute left. Fourth down and three for the Perry Maroons. <laughs> What's wrong? Jared Miner split wide to the right. Hand off quick to Russell Caldwell. He's close to the first down. From up here, it doesn't look like he made it. I don't believe he did. <laughs> Get this up here closer. I don't believe he made it. Well, they still haven't made a decision. The well, clock is stopped. If they can't eyeball it from down there, we sure can eyeball it from up here. We have to wait and We've see. We've done it. it before. I know. We're lucky. <laughs> While they measure, let me tell you about the Payne County Bank. They've been serving Payne and surrounding counties for over 100 years since 1898. They've been in Perkins putting their ex expertise to work for their clients. The Payne County Bank, 202 South Main. You can't miss it. Convenient drive through and great people. Short by six inches, so Perkins going to get the ball back with 57 seconds and the win at their back. They're a quick scoring offense, John. Well, put that in the break column. That's one of the breaks you look for, that they didn't make that. Yeah. There's no doubt Perry would like to go into the halftime with a lead. You bet. They'll more than likely be in some, some kind of prevent defense here, and well, that's Mobley's, generally where you get burned. We're going to see a pass to Mobley over on the right side. I, I, I Count that one. Mills in motion, fake handoff to Spence, looking for Babb. He's not going to have a chance to throw it because number 88, that's Kurt, or number 80, excuse me, that's Curtis Justice gets through for the quarterback sack. Well, I said we was going to see a pass to Mobley. We was going to see a pass to somebody except the Perry Maroons said no. You're not going to pass to anybody. We're going to shut this one down. So Perkins lost is going to use one of their timeouts with 44 seconds left in the first half. We'll keep it right here. Now, while you're keeping it right here, let me tell the good folks about Frontier Lanes. Bowling at its finest. Whether you're a league bowler or a recreational bowler, Frontier Lanes is just right for you. Earning his staff, make sure that everyone has a good time. Even the kiddos. Leagues are forming right now for all ages. Visit the Frontier Lanes in Stillwater. Might as well tell them about Murphy's Potpourri. Also, another good sponsor down there for the Perkins side. Located in downtown Stillwater. Murphy says everything you need to get for ready for the holidays, including Halloween that's coming up. They have all the accessories for your baking duties during those holiday seasons. So go see Terry and his knowledgeable staff. They're ready to help you plan all your fall entertainment needs right there in downtown Stillwater. Looking at big number 80, Curtis Justice for the Perry Maroons came up with a big play on the last defensive possession. He just came up with another one with a quarterback sack. It's going to be second down and long. McBride, quick pass to Mills over on the right sideline. He breaks two tackles, goes upfield for a gain of about 10 on the play. It's going to bring up third down and six. Well, Mills 
Mills is going to stay at that just like Spence. We've talked about that. They're they're going to try to get around that corner all night long, Spence and uh, Mills, and they're just going to keep pecking even in these last seconds of this uh, half. Hurry up offense. McBride takes the snap himself, tries to get the first down. He's going to be stopped two yards short. Well, what a shame for Perkins, too, because uh, they had a receiver number, uh, Cameron Kramer, number 28, was wide open down that line. Of course, one of the reasons he's wide open is because some, nobody chased him when the whistle blew. But uh, Perkins wanted to get that off. They wanted to get that pass play off. Cameron is ready. I believe that's seconds. Cameron Carner uh, for the Perkins trying offense. Uh, let me try this Cameron Kamer. Is it Kamer Cameron or Cameron Kamer? 28 is Carner. Not my, a very good my, friend of the program here. My program says Kamer, so it's Carmer. It is Carner. Thank you, sir. You corrected the program. <laughs> we didn't print it. We just read it. That's right. I don't I don't explain the jokes. I just tell them. <laughs> You're looking at coach, head coach Mark Bates talking to his defense, and you can't see him in the picture, but the defensive secondary coach is Tim Beecham for the Perry Maroons. They're talking over strategy as they get ready for this fourth down play from the Perkins Demons with 14 seconds left in the first half. If you're just joining us right here on TV 31, the Maroons lead in this battle of unbeatens, 12-7. to 7. What a game we got going. Mm, boy, what a game. McBride, quick pass to Mills on the right sideline. He's going to pick up the first down and get out of bounds quick with nine seconds left on the clock. Well, nine seconds for Perkins is a lot of time. And tonight, the way the Mary Maroons are playing, it's a lot of time for them also on offense. We've seen some good offensive attacks here tonight. We knew Perry in the last few games that had a terrific offense, uh, wiping out the last two opponents by good margins. We saw a defensive struggle with Perkins uh, last week when they played Pawnee, although their offense was able to muster and uh, win that game. And then the, uh, our game that we broadcast week before against Posca. Here they go. Corner to the right, Mills to the left. McBride back to throw. He's looking deep for Eric Mills, and it's going to be... It's going to be picked off by the Perry Maroons. What a play by the Perry Maroon defense. I believe that was number 11, Jared Miner, on the interception. Big play for the Maroons with two seconds left. Well, was it Jared Miner or Ryan Corn? I thought it was Ryan Corn. We'll give them both credit. Sure. Why not? I can't do that in the stats, but we can do it on the air. <laughs> That's right. We can do it here. Yeah, there goes Miner in now. So it was Ryan Corn, actually number eight. Well, you saying it the other way? Okay, we'll give them both credit. They both intercepted that pass. We'll find out when we watch this game. Two seconds left. You think we'll see a Baylor play here? Uh, well, we could. <laughs> I believe that's the victory <laughs> formation. Atkinson will take the ball, down it, and time will run out here at Daniels Field in Perry, Oklahoma. The Maroons are on top, 12 to 7. I've got a halftime guess. That's coming up. We'll be talking. We'll talk about the game so far this half, and then I've got Brad Finley. He's going to be up here with me talking about Cowboy Kids, and then Sandy Hinges, the band director at Perry, will be up here to talk about a big award her great band has won, and the school uh, band is going to New York City. So we'll be back right after this break. Mr. C shows their pride in the Barry Maroons every day at the corner of 15th and Fur. Mr. C's, where easy access, quick service, and a great staff of friendly employees provide quality products. Fill up 66 gasoline from 12 pumps. Great fresh food from the deli, from snacks to dinners, including their famous roasted chicken and succulent barbecue ribs. Even a First Bank of Perry ATM. From magazines and milk to cold drinks and Perry Maroon pep rallies, you'll find it all at Perry's number one convenience store. 24 hours a day, Mr. C's, where Perry Pride is number one. Murphy's has sold China, housewares, gift, and bath items to Oklahoma since 1926. With the largest china and crystal display in Oklahoma, complete housewares and cookware selection, and thousands of gift ideas, Murphy's has something for every home. Buying across the country, selling around the world, Murphy's uses the latest internet and computer technology to offer our Oklahoma customers the best selection at competitive prices. Visit Murphy's seven days a week in the store or 24 hours a day online and see what the Murphy's team has in store for your family. Downtown Stillwater, Murphy's since 1926. And we're back. It's halftime in Perry with the Maroons on top, 12 to 7, as the Perry Maroon marching band comes on the field. We're going to try and recap the first half for you a little bit. Not much action, really, to talk about, but what the big thing is is the Maroons on top, 12 to 7. They're starting 
maybe they've gained the respect that they've been looking for. Well, I, I, I think they well deserve it, the respect that they've been looking for, because uh, to be honest, we hadn't seen them. Uh, we, we, don't, you know, we haven't seen them play since last year, and we've heard about these last victories, and uh, we didn't know what to expect out of the Perry Maroons, and uh, it looks like uh, no one really did. Uh, we expected a good game. I didn't expect it to be this close. I expected somebody would be out in front by quite a margin now with the two good offenses that both teams have. I thought one of them would have had the uh, uh, margin here quite uh, an extensive margin by this time of the game. Didn't know which one, but uh, this is going to be a good tight game. Uh, it's going to be a second half game, and, and I think it's all now sitting on the defense. We've seen, uh, pardon me, on the offensive plays, we've seen the threats of both teams make their threats and time and time again, and finally they broke them. Russell Caldwell broke one. Uh, uh, Luke Spence broke one for a touchdown. Uh, who scored the other one? Was that uh, Victor or Dion? Russell Caldwell and Dion Vester scored the two touchdowns for Perry. Okay. They weren't able to convert either extra point attempt or point after attempt. So we've seen the uh, threats do the scoring here in tonight's game so far, and that's the way it's going to be in the second half. Well, Buck? what's happened is if, if Perkins watched last week's game field, what they saw, they saw a lot of throwing. Tonight, Perry has yet to attempt to pass. They've dropped back to pass, but have been, have been able to get one off. So we've seen a tale of two stories here in two weeks. Well, Perry did attempt one pass over into the end zone, uh, thrown over the head. But, I mean, as, as far as a, a long gainer pass, they haven't been after that tonight. And, uh, hey, if you've got Vester and Atkinson and Caldwell running, why do it? You know, so, hey, it's a smart game being played by two good teams out here. And we've got a great second half coming up. We've still got halftime activities for you as the Perry Maroon Band marches. We're going to come back, and when we do, a special guest will join John right here in the broadcast booth. Stay tuned to TV 31. For 74 years, generations of Oklahomans have enjoyed one of the state's best eating places, the Comeback Cafe in Perry. At the same location on the town square since day one, you can enjoy breakfast, lunch, or dinner. From large fluffy pancakes to flame-cooked steaks, from oversized char-grilled hamburgers to original recipe Mexican food, generations of Perry Maroons have enjoyed the great food at the comeback and you will also make your selection for the vast menu or the posted daily specials the friendly staff is ready to serve you the delicious cooking of the famous comeback cafe where do you start your morning every day it should be at the whistle stop at the whistle stop you can pick up your morning paper and get a free cup of coffee from six to eight every morning then you can come back for lunch and enjoy a fresh slice of simple simon's pizza or choose from one of their many deli items, plus all the usuals such as refreshing fountain drinks and plenty of snacks to get you through the day. Whistle Stop, two locations at Perkins and one in Morrison. Whistle Stop, proud supporters of high school athletics. With me up here in the booth during the halftime is Brad Finley. Brad's an alumnus of Perry High School. In other words, that makes you a Maroon. I guess so. <laughs> I was born a Maroon, graduated in 80. Well, yeah, you uh, you were an athlete here. Uh, played, I know we played baseball and played it well. You were on a you were on a uh, state championship team or one that went after it. Tell us. Yeah, we, the four years I was in high school, we made the state tournament three of the four years. That's the first time that's happened. But then in American Legion ball, we had our first American Legion team and Papa Joe Ripley was our coach and uh, we won state championship and then next year couldn't field the team but uh, that's our claim to fame but well I sure don't want to put a damper on our interview but while you said it we sure miss Papa Joe wish he were back here I, I, I love the man as you did and uh, we certainly miss him our, our hearts go out to Betty and uh, we'll get off that subject well, I wish he was here well, you can't come to a sporting event in town without thinking about the man and what he taught all the youth here in Perry and and uh, you know, just people that want to be leaders, they learn not to ever give up and to set goals and to always be a team player. And that's good to see that we've got the coaching staffs here at the high school that are promoting the same Sure. Players. And for you Perkins listeners uh, that have played baseball up here, you've played at Ripley Field, named after Joe Ripley. And that's another thing. This Perkins team's come up here. You know, our boys at Perry and the Perkins boys are always playing baseball or something, wrestling. I think they even wrestle together. They know one another. I'll tell you what, they were tough when I were in high school. They were um, number two ranked in the state behind us. And... Uh, we they we happened to beat them in the uh, district, and up it was an upset then. They were they were uh, favored over us, but we was ranked higher. But a lot of those guys like Todd Smalley, Dwayne Deaver, who's all state quarterback for Perkins back then, Chuck Lee, now and Tracy Farmer. I mean, Perkins has always had good athletes, and uh, it's nice to see them renewing the rivalry with Perry here tonight. 
Well, actually, Brad, let's tell them what we're here about. You know, you're, you're an athlete, you're an alumnus here, but your best credit is you're married to a letter woman from the University of Oklahoma. Her name is Melissa. Her maiden name was Macias, and now it's Finley, of course, and she's still an athlete. She runs Cowboy Kids down in uh, Stillwater. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. I know absolutely nothing about Cowboy Kids except... I see them every place I go to. I see them down at Gallagher Ibe. I see them at football games. They've been up here. They're all over. Tell me about the Cowboy Kids. Well, it's a business that Melissa wanted to start up. And we used to have Finley Zip Trip, the convenience store here in Perry, and uh, decided to get out of that. And Melissa, out of all the athletes I competed against in college and high school playing baseball, I, you know, like Joe Carter and those kind of guys, yeah. um, I think I married the best athlete I've ever seen. And uh, she was uh, a gymnast at OU and a cheerleader, but she walked, you don't see, most gymnasts you see learn from three, four, and five years old, and you see Olympic champions 13 and 14. Well, she'd never had any gymnastics before and walked onto the OU team and was that much, that good of an athlete to make it. And she's still a good athlete today. <laughs> an excellent <laughs> athlete. Excellent. Uh, but, you know, I, she started it from scratch, and now she's got close to 400 kids learning uh, cheerleading and tumbling and even a daycare now during the day. But it's, she gets a lot of girls that want to be cheerleaders and so forth that maybe don't know how to tumble and they've been trying to learn a back handspring say for a year and she'll have them doing it in 20 minutes just because she knows the proper technique it's kind of like if you're going to learn how to play golf you wouldn't learn from somebody shooting 100 you want to learn from somebody shooting under par like jack nicholas or tiger woods well, that's what she offers them. Sure. And a credit, a credit to Melissa and Perry is that some of her kids that she's had are athletes out here tonight. The cheerleaders, some of those football players, and our wrestling program. There are a bunch of kids that have, are, are, have been and still are students. of. Well, one of the athletes that she took raw out of there was Luke Lumbers. He's an OSU cheerleader. I even think he's on a scholarship of some sort. But uh, we're starting to see a lot of people that you wouldn't traditionally think would be tumbling and cheerleading. But a lot of, as Perry, as you know, Perry's the wrestling capital of the world. And we're getting a lot of the young wrestlers, you know, anywhere from five years old up to 10 or 12 that want to improve their balance, their agility. And uh, when you see some of the things they do, like if you go to the parades, they're going to be in the homecoming parade tomorrow in Stillwater. I challenge the football players to do what these kids are doing. But, you know, it's the things we used to have in PE when I was a kid that they don't, you don't see so much anymore, and it, it's just good fundamentals because what you see is they can pick a sport and, and they benefit from this sure. type of activity. Well, not only does she have students from up here in Perry, of course, Stillwater and Perkins, Cushing, they all in our area, she has students from that area. If you don't have a student there, if you don't have a child that's in Cowboy Kids, what do they do? Who do they call? Well, we have an easy phone number to remember in Stillwater. It's 743-FLIP. Uh, <laughs> All right, you know, seven four three flip in Stillwater, and that'll get you in touch with Cowboy Kids, and you can get your kids in there. Now we've got another Letterman in your family at OU. Oh, my father-in-law. Yeah, they're the, they're the first father and uh, daughter to be Letterman at the same university at Oklahoma. He was an All-American wrestler in, uh, I believe, 1960. Well, way back there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I dated him. He probably won't appreciate that. Yeah. The thing he'll be proudest of is that you eat enough of those comeback carrots to notice that they that they were six inches short before they did the measurement. <laughs> so it's obviously good for your eyes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, uh, they own the Comeback Cafe, which is one of our sponsors here. So you're just connected with all the sponsors here in a way. Well, when you're born in this town, I've had, like I've said, I've always accused everybody in this town of raising me. <laughs> and so I guess everybody's got to hold me up. But uh, what, you mentioned, you know, if people wanted to call from another town to do Cowboy Kids, one of the things that Melissa's done uh, is use the daycare bus, and if there's people around the area that are interested, uh, what brought this up, there's a lot of people from Perry said, you know, we'd like to, but we just don't have time to drive our kids to Stillwater. And so she's put a deal on the paper where she'd pick up, and she comes to Perry twice a week and picks up like 20, 25 kids and takes them over to Stillwater, and they tumble, and she brings them back. So, you know, I guess that's, if there's anybody interested, they get to learn from the best. I mean, she's, and she loves it. I mean, she's a gym rat, and that's, it's not really work to her because it's what she loves to do, and it's satisfying for me to get her started in that business and to get her come home and just to see how happy she is. And she's always telling me about how she loves teaching the kids, and she notices each week that it's not just their tumbling skills, but she can tell that each kid, their self-esteem grows each week, and they're more confident. And we just hosted a couple thousand cheerleaders in Perry here this last Saturday mm -hmm. for a regional competition that qualifies them to go to nationals. 
And uh, our little five-year-old, just to give you an example, competed say. as an individual. And I was more nervous than she was, but you fill up John Devine Hall and you get five, six, and seven-year-olds competing that getting up in front of a crowd and performing and, and practicing every day and working, that's stuff that you teach through athletics and schools, and they're learning it at an early age. But the other benefit is you, all those kids get to be yours. That's right. I mean, you're so proud of them. You'd think they were your kids. Well, we you're talking 400. about your kid, Taylor. Yeah. We, we've seen you talk about self-esteem. I mean, has she developed in the last couple of years or not? This girl, oh. and, you know, it is a product of that program. And it's not it's not just a product of your home environment, but that program really helped. Uh, you can see it in Taylor. Yeah. Quite gets, a girl. She gets better if the crowd gets bigger. I think she didn't <laughs> fall too far from the tree there. <laughs> well, anyway, law, hey, know. the people that are listening to this broadcast right now, it's Saturday morning. And this afternoon now, the Cowboy kids are someplace down at o OSU doing something. Yeah, they're in the homecoming parade. We've been in there for about, well, since we've been in business, about the last five years. And we're usually right behind Pistol Peter, right around in there. They always like to get next to the kids. And uh, it, they always get a well welcome reception over at OSU. But you'll see them in the Perry uh, Cherokee Strip celebration, and they perform at the pavilion. And... And uh, they also do a lot of performances for halftime, so that you'll see them at the OSU basketball game or different high school games around. And like I say, we try to go to as many of those as we can just to get the kids more, you know, used to uh, performing in front of a crowd. And I mentioned this event we had last Saturday. They qualified to go to nationals. And I've been to a lot of wrestling tournaments and all that stuff, you know, through my life here. And uh, you think those crowds are big, but you get to nationals. There's seven, 8,000 screaming women and, and cheerleaders and all that. And... Uh, it, it, it really gets them ready for later on in life when they've got to get up and perform in front of a group. Well, you say they qualified for nationals. When is that? Where is it? Well, it's in San Antonio in uh, February. In February. And you will have a big group to go. Right. And a fun trip for all of them. Plus, it's a competition at its keenest down there, which uh, makes these kids. Well, that's what, that's what really makes it. Like you say, uh, you know, I'm a Lumma Perry. I was also, you know, president of the band. But I was in a sport all year all around. I mean, football, basketball, baseball, and then in the summer. And the biggest things that, you know, we talked about Papa Joe earlier is what you learn from athletics that helps you in your career. Goal setting, teamwork. And I guess what we offer to kids is, besides self-esteem, is just allowing them to be in that environment before they're old enough to get into athletics. It's well, really satisfying. I talk about you being an athlete. I talk about Mary Lee being an athlete and Tony being an athlete. Of course, your uh, father is a real golfer. Bra uh, uh, Bill Finley is a real golfer, quite you know, quite a fella. And I've I got to ask you the question. Can you beat either one of them? Can you beat Tony or or Bill, your dad? on the record? Yeah, put it on the record. <laughs> we want to step out here with it. Oh, well, you know, they, they're a really good competition. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey. Get on record here now. Okay. Tell me. The world's wanting to know. Well, they, they can't stay close. That's what I heard, yeah. It just depends on how much I'm playing. <laughs> Dad's kind of tricky because he can play this course blindfolded, him and Tony. Dad's driver three wood and a wedge and a putt, and I'm usually a driver wedge and a couple putts or three. <laughs> Is it true that those two are so addicted to that game they've been caught out there at midnight playing, <laughs> playing the dark? I'm beginning to wonder that my father and father-in-law is getting too close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we wonder about that. <laughs> Brad, is any last words you want to say about uh, your, of course, uh, something's close to you, the Cowboy Kids, you and, and Melissa. Uh, is there anything we've forgotten to cover on that? Well, one thing they're going to do here right the weekend before Halloween, and we're doing it as a fundraiser so the, the coaches and the kids and the parents can all go to nationals because, you know, a lot of people are, it's hard to get that kind of money to go follow kids. We're having at the gym a, a haunted house Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Uh, Halloween's on Tuesday, I think. But we had one last year. It really went over well, and the money we raised goes to help pay for the parents' trip to San Antonio. So I guess, you know, it's a lot of fun. Well, we're going to have to take a break here, Brad, but I wonder before we do, you work for a little tiny company here in Perry. I, I can't remember the name of it. What is that company? Charles Machine Works. Ditch Witch, That's you right. bet. The largest company around, I guarantee you're going to find company and big supporters of the Perry Maroons and Perry High School. Well, and also they have competition out there, and the things we talked about learning from athletics I use every day out there. Never hey. giving up, setting goals, and, you know, setting your sights on certain customers. We do the same thing, but. Changing sports, you got a pretty good race car in Bobby Labonte, too, haven't you? <laughs> hey. He won last week at Charlotte, and looks like he's going to win the points race. And, and uh, if you look at him and Joe Gibbs. They're what you want to be mirrored to because they stand for the same things that Ed does. Brad, thanks for coming up. Uh, I know Melissa was busy in the practice and couldn't get here right now, but we appreciate you coming. Tell her I said hello. Well, I'm, I'll do that, and I appreciate the opportunity to be up here with you. I just didn't realize that you trained John Brooks, but 
it's an honor to be up here with such a legend in the booth. <laughs> well, I, I trained them all, if you want to know the truth. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm yeah. going to have to get into this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Let me. Hey, I want to spend five minutes on telling you who I train. I know we we got to go. Hey, we're going to take a break right here, and we'll be back uh, shortly with some more halftime interviews. We're going to interview the Perry Maroon Band Director Sandy Hinges. We'll be back. Thanks a lot. Sandy Bacon Perkins has been serving the Perkins community for over 100 years. Since 1898, they put their expertise to work for their customers. With convenient drive through service in a great central location, Payne County Bank is there for you. And for the Perkins Trying Demons, Payne County Bank 202 South Main, proud supporters of PT Athletics. Mr. C shows their pride in the Barry Maroons every day at the corner of 15th and Fur. Mr. C's, where easy access, quick service, and a great staff of friendly employees provide quality products. Fill up 66 gasoline from 12 pumps. Great fresh food from the deli, from snacks to dinners, including their famous roasted chicken and succulent barbecue ribs. Even a First Bank of Perry ATM. From magazines and milk to cold drinks and Perry Maroon pep rallies, you'll find it all at Perry's number one convenience store. 24 hours a day, Mr. C's where Perry Pride is number one. And we're back here, Buck Lane. We'll see you, Brad. Brad Finley was our halftime guest. He's saying goodbye to Buck and I now as the teams take the field. Well, let's get ready. It's going to be a great second half. Well, one of two things is going to happen. Perry's going to continue to do what made them successful in the first half, and that's run the ball right at the Demons, or the Demons are going to wake up on offense, and when the Demons awake, trouble looms ahead. Well, you know, we've said it many times, good things happen to good teams, and we've got two good teams out here, so I expect to see a lot more good things happen to both of these teams. One of them is going to end uh, up leaving here tonight, the winner, and leading in the district and having no defeats in that uh, in the district play. And uh, right now the Perry Maroons have the lead 12-7 uh, to 7 in this first half. Uh, it's, it's been offensive break. There has been breaks and then offensive plays that have put both of these uh, teams on the scoreboard. We've got 146 left until the second half will begin. We're still expecting band director Sandy Hinches to join us here in the broadcast booth. We got some. I know she's got something she's awful proud of that she wants to talk about. Well, they won a big award, and they've got a big trip coming up. We need to talk about all those things. Sandy's one of my, my favorites here. They've, she's got a great band, and, and she's a, a good band director and good band instructor. John, that's well said. She still hasn't been here yet. But we've got 121 left till kickoff. We'll go ahead and take one more break. When we come back, we'll have the second half action live from Daniels Field. For 74 years, generations of Oklahomans have enjoyed one of the state's best eating places, the Comeback Cafe in Perry. At the same location on the town square since day one, you can enjoy breakfast, lunch, or dinner. From large fluffy pancakes to flame-cooked steaks, from oversized char-grilled hamburgers to original recipe Mexican food, generations of Perry Maroons have enjoyed the great food at the Comeback, and you will also. Make your selection for the vast menu or the posted daily specials. The friendly staff is ready to serve you the delicious cooking of the famous Comeback Cafe. Where do you start your morning every day? It should be at the Whistle Stop. At the Whistle Stop, you can pick up your morning paper and get a free cup of coffee from 6 to 8 every morning. Then you can come back for lunch and enjoy a fresh slice of Simple Simon's Pizza or choose from one of their many deli items. Plus all the usual, such as refreshing fountain drinks and plenty of snacks to get you through the day. Whistle Stop, two locations in Perkins and one in Morrison. Whistle Stop, proud supporters of high school athletics. Just getting ready to start the third quarter. Perry on top, 12 to 7. John, won't you go ahead and run down some of the first half statistics? Well, for Perry in the first half, and actually in the first quarter, Perry carried the ball 14 times for 62 yards. In the second quarter, they carried the ball 19 times for 96 yards. A total of 33 times they carried the ball in the half and gained 158 yards and two touchdowns. For Perkins, in the first quarter, they ran the ball nine times for 10 yards. In the second quarter, eight times for 38 yards. A total of 17 times for 48 yards. They threw one pass for a minus two yards. They fumbled three times, lost two of them. Perry only fumbled once and did not lose the ball. So it, actually, it's a pretty even game as far as what they did, uh, except for the breaks and the turnovers. But other than that, it's a pretty even game. We don't know who our statistician was, but we'd like to thank him for that. Those stats, in fact, Perry did lose one fumble, and that's how Perkins scored their first touchdown. Bobby Holmes kicks to Victor Atkins, and it sails into the end zone. Another touchback. 
So no time runs off the clock as we've just begun the second half. Perry will take over their first possession on their own 20-yard line, leading 12-7. to seven. Well, it's just like starting over again at this uh, second half. Uh, both teams have got to come out now and make them um, a statement, get the momentum going their way, and start scoring some points to get these offenses to clicking. Uh, we've, we, last week, like I said, we watched uh, Perkins, who just banged at it, banged at it, banged at it with the things that do them best, and that's what Perry's done here tonight. So we got two pretty well evenly matched teams are, are trying to get their offenses mustered. Offset backfield, Victor Atkinson has trouble getting the snap. There's going to be a flag on the play. Flag's on the play. Well, actually, of course, it was dropped in there on that flag on the play. Big John McLaughlin jumped on it. He's the center. And he was right there handy, but it wouldn't have meant anything, but he was uh, uh, he was alert enough to get on top of that ball. So the five-yard penalty illegal procedure against the Maroons will set them back. Ball on the 15-yard line. Be first down and 15. Well, first and 15, uh, uh, this is probably one of the worst uh, field positions, actually, that Perry's had all night from the line of scrimmage. So they've got to uh, continue to move the ball, as does Perkins. Atkinson hands off to Caldwell up the middle. Not much there. It's number 57. Anthony Broussard is the first man on the scene for the Demons. Well, well the only defense we've seen play here, of course, in the second half is uh, uh, Perkins, and they're giving a completely different. They're showing us what they normally do. Uh, there's no penetration up on that front line, and I'm sure that uh, both teams were coached well at the halftime, saying that their defenses, as good as they are, did not hold up in that first half, and they're going to have to do better. Not bad percentages for one play, wouldn't no, you it say? Is. <laughs> mm. Oh, second down and 14 for the Perry Maroons. Curtis Justice shifts over to the left side. Atkinson takes the ball from the center, hands off to Dion Vestry. He's tripped up at the line of scrimmage, I think, by number 70, James Miles for the Demons. That's who it was. Now, uh, Perry's going to uh, Perry's going to uh, look for nothing new. Uh, right now, uh, as I as I keep bringing out in the broadcast, when you see a change in complexion of the game, you that's when uh, a team starts calling what we call desperation play. You're not going to see that for a while here, not till something drastic happens for one team or the other, or they're going to play desperation. They're going to stick with their game plans, and they're just going to go with the men who bring them the yards. Miner and Bole to the left. Curtis Justice out here by himself with Jer Eric Mills. The ball's thrown just behind. And just out of his reach, gets his hands on it, but is not able to pull it in. So that's going to bring up fourth down and 12 for the Perry Maroons on their own 18-yard line. Okay, now that's not a new offensive play for the Perry Maroons, folks. They do that every week. It's just that we haven't seen it tonight. That is not a desperation play. That was one of their smooth plays. They work it, and uh, Curtis Justice uh, runs that route good, and he's a tall man. We're going to punt now, though. Curtis Justice on the punt. Back to receiver Perkins is Eric Mills. It's a high punt. He signals for a fair catch and catches it on the Perry 43-yard line. Well, Eric Mills is back by himself, of course, with all that territory. That was a good time to do it. And uh, all Eric had to do was get up there, give the fair catch, and get that ball down. And they're going to take over at the 45-yard line of Perry. We've got 10.36 left in the third quarter. Perry on top, 12-7. to We'll be right back. Mr. C shows their pride in the Perry Maroons every day at the corner of 15th and Fur. Mr. C's, where easy access, quick service, and a great staff of friendly employees provide quality products. Fill up 66 gasoline from 12 pumps. Great fresh food from the deli, from snacks to dinners, including their famous roasted chicken and succulent barbecue ribs. Even a First Bank of Perry ATM. From magazines and milk to cold drinks and Perry Maroon pep rallies, you'll find it all at Perry's number one convenience store. 24 hours a day, Mr. C's where Perry Pride is number one. It's time once again to dust off that old bowling ball, break out the shoes, and try your hand at bowling. Bowling's great fun for the entire family, and you and your family are invited to Frontier Lanes for all the fun. Whether you're a recreational bowler or more on the competitive side, Frontier Lanes is for you. Come have a great time, and don't forget Frontier Lanes has a wonderful snack bar to keep you refreshed during your visit. And they have pool tables as well. For over 40 years of fun, Frontier Lanes. Call 372-8584 for more information. Session of the second half, Ken McBride pitches to Luke Spence over the right side. He's going to be brought down by number 33 for the Maroons, Russell Caldwell, but not before he picks up eight on the play. Now, this is where Russell's been playing all season on the defensive side. He's a good defensive player, and we called early that we'd see him on the offense tonight. Sure enough, he broke one for a touchdown playing off that offense in that eye formation that we've been, uh, double eye, we've been seeing uh, tonight for the Perry Maroons. 
Number 28, Cameron Carner and Eric Mills wide to the right. McBride hands off to Jace Collum, the big fullback, number 32. He's going to pick up the Perkins first down and more. Yeah, well, that's a, you know, it's the first time we've seen him uh, run up tonight, and especially the first time we've seen him get in into the secondary fullback play. And we're glad to see him in there because that's one of the plays that's brought some bread and butter to the Perkins uh, Demons over the season. But it's usually uh, Mills and Spence doing most of the work back there in the backfield. So far, the Maroon defense, as we said earlier, can bend, but they can't break. They're bending a little bit, but they haven't broke yet. And they've been able to pick up the big plays when they need them. That time, Ken McBride fumbles the snap, tries to pick it up and move forward, but he's going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Well, there's a real break for the Perkins Demons right there. If that ball didn't end up on the ground and stay there, then a Prairie Maroon didn't jump on it. That, that's a good place for the Prairie Maroons to, to uh, take advantage of a break like that, but it didn't happen. And Perkins is real glad. 12 to 7, our score. In case you just joined us, Perry leads. We're in the third quarter. Second down and 11. Pitch to Spence around the right side. He's met at the line of scrimmage by number 33. That's Russell Caldwell, and John Russell's not getting it done just on offense. He's having a pretty good defensive game. Well, he's, he's an excellent defensive player. That's the reason he's been playing more defense this year, but he's an excellent offense player. Now, we saw the bobble again then. We've seen that several times on Perkins' side. Now, I don't know where there's the moisture that went into the ground is starting to affect this uh, uh, ball handling, I, but we, would, we haven't seen it on the Perry side, so evidently it's not. It's something their timing is just a little bit off. We have an official's timeout. I believe number 32, Jace Collum, had some blood on his arm. The referees will make him leave the game and take care of that before they will let him play. Number 11, Jeremy Mobley split to the left. Eric Mills in the slot position. Kim McBride fakes to the fullback, throws behind Mills. He catches a one-handed catch. He's going to be tackled by three Maroons on the play. Leading the way, I believe, was number 36, Eric Mosier, and Victor Atkinson, number one. Well, it was a short gainer, but an excellent catch going backwards, reaching around with his left hand, uh, backing up when he caught that pass. It was a beautiful reception by Eric Mills, something he does well, and they expect him to do it well. Not much gain on the game, though. Bobby Three Holmes yards. is on to attempt, believe it or not, a 45-yard line with a stiff wind at his back. These three points would be huge if they can put it through. Well, you think he's really going to kick one? Yep. Good snap. Holds down. Kick is blocked. It's blocked by number 66, John McLaughlin. And number 80, or excuse me, number 60 for the Perry Maroons, Caleb Young recovers it. So Perry comes through with the first big break of the second half. Well, that's one success that Perry has had, not particularly from those players, but they've had it all season. They blocked a bunch of kicks, extra points, field goals. They've done well with that all season. And once again, they stood the test, and that uh, cut Perkins off at the pass, and now they uh, Mar Perry Maroons go on offense with good field position. Well, we won't have the benefit of instant replay on that, John, but I bet... I bet if we did have the benefit to see that play again, there wasn't much blocking going on up front for the Perkins Demons. De Deion Vester takes the handoff for Atkinson, goes 14 yards to the Perkins 47-yard line. That's good enough for a Perry first down. Well, the uh, Perry Marines are doing just exactly what their fans have been seeing for the last couple of weeks and have been telling us that they were able to do, and they're certainly doing it and to the excitement of these Perry Maroon fans as they advance across the 50. Atkinson to... Vester once again, this time he's met at the line of scrimmage. First on the scene was Justin Perkins, and he got some help from big number 77, Josh Mobley. You know, we knew they were running a good offense, and you mentioned it earlier. There's great discipline on the part of this Perry Maroon team that we have not, we didn't see this last year. They've got great discipline there. I don't think we saw it or anybody saw it the first part of the season, but something's happening. These Perry Maroons are making no mistakes. Second down and nine, ball on the 46-yard line. Vester over the left side runs into his blocker. That's 33, Russell Caldwell. Picks up a yard after that. It's going to bring up third and short for the Maroons. Now, nobody's more excited about this ball game than the folks at Mr. C's. Easy access at the corner of 15th and Fur. Remember, all you people that hear this commercial, all you've got to do is drive into Mr. C's today, tomorrow, and say, hey, I heard your commercial. I want that free $4 car wash, and they'll give it to you. That's at Mr. C's. Home of that great roasted chicken and falling off the bone barbecue ribs. Tell them John and Buck sent you. Handoff goes to Vester. He gets near a Perry first down, appears to have it from our point. 
of view. Well, our eyeball up here makes it look like he's got it. This is another first down for the Perry Maroons, and they continue to advance this ball in this drive. Something they want to do, and they're going to do. And the Perry Maroon fans couldn't be more excited. Probably what they're more excited about is that clock continues to run while they're ahead on the scoreboard. And threatening to score again inside and down in Perkins territory. Sharp to the left, At Atkinson hands off to the first man through Russell Caldwell. He falls forward for a gain of three. I'm sure glad you and I both were smart enough to say that Caldwell would probably be running back tonight. And boy, boy, we're smart, aren't we? <laughs> I think you said it. I don't remember oh, saying that. Okay, well, that was a no-brainer on my part. I just knew he would be. Yeah. Hey, visit the Comeback See, Cafe. Uh, you've got to get down there, a place I spend a great deal of time. Tell you more in a minute. You do spend a lot of time down there. Dion Vester gets the handoff from Atkinson. Not much there this time. He may gain a yard on the play. Seems like every time you're there, I see you drink coffee and eat. But I never see you pay when you go out the door. What's your secret? God, why did you tell? Don't tell. <laughs> Don't tell that. They'll be watching me now. <laughs> I keep trying to get my ticket put on yours, and I never can. <laughs> Perry Maroon cheerleaders up in front of us now with their big signs. Go Big M. And they want their Perry Maroons to get on down there and score. 5 4 and counting in the third quarter. David Sharp split to the right. Full house backfield, fakes to the first man through. Atkinson keeps it himself, goes over the right side, and he picks up another Perry first down. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's just uh, have, your, have your good runners do what they do best, and that's run. That's what Atkinson did, picked up the first down. Let me finish telling you about the Comeback Cafe. All that good food in there, and your favorite is chicken fried steak. I look at that plate. I see that big chicken fried piled up there. I can't believe it. You can't oh, eat it all. I can't eat it all. <laughs> I can't even look at it all. What do you mean, eat it all? <laughs> Great food. Try it. Come back cafe for 74 years on the north side of the square in Perry. That's not the first time anyone's ever said you had bad vision. That's true. <laughs> Atkinson on the carry. Made at the line of scrimmage by the entire Perkins trying defense. They were all there. Leading the way, number 48, John Plunk. You mentioned me spending a lot of time to come back cafe. There's some people that any place I spend a lot of time, they think I'm on the payroll. Little do they know. That must be how you're getting that food paid for. <laughs> Little do they know. That's the reason I walk out the door without paying. That's, that's called paycheck re reduction, I think. <laughs> Atkinson fakes to Vester, keeps it himself, bootleg himself, got Jeremy Mobley to beat, Eric Mills to beat. He's near the end zone. Touchdown, Perry. Well, by just pure effort. Little juke here, little juke there, and you get by him. And that's what he did. He just he got down there and he just he said, Nope, you're not gonna stop me. I'm going in. Well, it's more than pure effort. It's pure athleticism, as Victor is one of the most athletic sophomores probably in the state. That time he took on two of Perkins' best players, Jeremy Mobley and number 10, Eric Mills, and he found a way to get in the end zone. So per Perry gets back on the scoreboard once again. Curtis Justice on to kick the extra point. It's up, and it's no good. Wide right, the referee save with 3.55 left in the third quarter. Perry still on top, 18-7. to Mr. C shows their pride in the Barry Maroons every day at the corner of 15th and Fur. Mr. C's, where easy access, quick service, and a great staff of friendly employees provide quality products. Fill up 66 gasoline from 12 pumps. Great fresh food from the deli, from snacks to dinners, including their famous roasted chicken and succulent barbecue ribs. Even a First Bank of Perry ATM. From magazines and milk to cold drinks and Perry Maroon pep rallies, you'll find it all at Perry's number one convenience store. 24 hours a day, Mr. C's where Perry Pride is number one. Follow the crowd to the hot spot in Stillwater. Cowboy Kids, the place for running, jumping, tumbling, and just plain having fun. Classes are available for aerobic kickboxing, taekwondo, cheerleading, and tumbling. Cowboy Kids has even more like a dollar chance and a daycare for children five years old and up. It's also a great place for birthday parties and parents. There's a waiting area just for you. So come be a Cowboy Kids. Joining us, there's 3.55 left in the third quarter. The Perry Maroons have shotguns thus far in this ball game. You got the catbird seat. Uh, we live in Perry. No doubt, if you look at the coaching staff, they've got their hands on their hip. 
over there on the far sideline. You know, obviously they're disappointed, probably mad. Well, b uh, both of those, and I think shock is a good ingredient. Bad kick by Vessers. It goes off the side of his foot. So Perkins is going to at least get some good field position out of this. And, John, with their quick scoring offense, they're not out of this game. No, they're not. And I'll tell you what, we say it was a bad kick, and it was. But actually, Tough Ostrom almost made it a good kick. He was up there ready to jump on that ball, but Perkins beat him to it. No, sir, let me tell you about Murphy's Potpourri in Stillwater, downtown Stillwater. Murphy's has everything you need to get ready for the holidays, including Halloween. They have all the accessories for your baking duties during the holiday season. Terry and his knowledgeable staff are ready to help you plan all your fall entertainment needs. That's in downtown Stillwater. Pitch goes to Spence over the left side. He breaks one tackle, but he's not going to be able to get away from number 66 on the play. John McLaughlin there to make the stop for the Maroons. Well, one of the things that... Uh, uh, that Perkins was looking for was to get around the corner tonight to be able to get around on Perry, and they were also looking to control Perry on the corner. But uh, they, they can't get around that. Neither team has gotten around the corner, actually. They've made their space right up the middle. Sometimes when your back's against the walls, you're going to have to pull out some trickery. So we're looking, expecting anything from the Demon offense right now as Mills comes to the near side. Cameron Corner goes to the far side. McBride almost falls down, looks for Jace Collum over the middle. Hits him in the shoulder pads, falls to the ground, incomplete. Bring up third down and eight. McBride Tripp coming back with the ball. Almost went to the ground back there as a, for a loss, but he got his momentum up and got, was able to stand up and then throw that pass. Of course, it was incomplete. But the Maroons are riding sky high right now. Momentum's with the Maroons. They're sky high. They're not going to – they're saying they're not going to let the Perkins Demons move that ball. There's no doubt that emotion plays a large part of – any ball game, but in football especially, when you got more players on the field to compete, emotion's going to carry you a long ways. And so far, Perry's emotion has carried them to an 18-7 lead. Well said. Jeremy Mobley to the left, Eric Mills to the right, and McBride quick throw to Mills. It's a lateral pass. He catches it, but he's not going to be able to get away from Victor Atkins. No, you're not going to be able to make that play either uh, unless you just do it all night and wait for the break. But Victor was out there. When you've got those outside men as fast as they are, they're going to be with you. You know, it's, it's, it's just trading punches right now. So Perkins will be forced to punt with 2.43 left in the third quarter. Victor Atkinson back to receive for the Maroon. It's going to be blocked by number 72, Jacob Hager. And that's going to be number 36. Eric Moser picks it up, carries it in for another Maroon touchdown. Well, we talked earlier. <laughs> Every game, the Perry Maroons have been able to block some form of kick. Punts, extra points, field goals. What an opportune time for them right now to make that block and take that ball in for a touchdown. Perry on top, 24 to 7. 224 left in the third quarter. Number 36, Eric Moser. Uh, John, I don't know what I don't know what's going on with the special teams for Perkins, but we haven't seen this before. The Perry coaching staff has obviously seen something on film. Well, you know what's going on in my mind. <laughs> yeah, but don't say it because we got a long no, way to go. No, <laughs> I know when to say it. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Perry Maroons are definitely earning the respect that they want. They may find themselves uh, in high. High company next week, John, if they can hang on here and win this game 24-7. Well, we talked about, you know, the Perry, team, uh, Perry fans are excited. The Perkins fans are shocked. But I'll guarantee you if this continues like this and then Perry ends up winning this game, I'll tell you who's going to be shocked. That's Pahuska, Newkirk, and Pawnee. Yes, I got to agree with you. Because they're going to sit there and say, oh, what have they got down there? Yeah, because they still got – those three teams still have to play the Maroons in the next three weeks. And uh, – Perry taking a big step right now with 224 left. They are going to, looks like they're going to attempt the extra point. That's number one. Victor Atkinson replaces Curtis Justice, who usually kicks the extra point, has missed two extra points already. So Atkinson will try it. It's going to get blocked at the line of scrimmage and no good. So with 224 left in the third quarter, we're going to take this short break. Perry on top, 24 to 7. It's time once again to dust off that old bowling ball, break out the shoes, and try your hand at bowling. Bowling's great fun for the entire family, and you and your family are invited to Frontier Lanes for all the fun. Whether you're a recreational bowler or more on the competitive side, Frontier Lanes is for you. 
Come have a great time, and don't forget Frontier Lanes has a wonderful snack bar to keep you refreshed during your visit. And they have pool tables as well. For over 40 years of fun, Frontier Lanes. Call 372-8584 for more information. Follow the crowd to the hot spot in Stillwater, Cowboy Kids. The place for running, jumping, tumbling, and just plain having fun. Classes are available for aerobic kickboxing, taekwondo, cheerleading, and tumbling. Cowboy Kids has even more like a dollar chance and a daycare for children five years old and up. It's also a great place for birthday parties and parents. There's a waiting area just for you. So come be a Cowboy Kid at the corner of Airport and Perkins Road in Stillwater. During our timeout, John, we saw the OU signee, you say, and Sooner Illustrated, Jacob Hager over here leading the crowd in their cheers, and they were definitely excited and excited about the prospects of the rest of this game. Well, I, I don't think in the, in the four years I've been in Perry, I don't think there's been a if, if, uh, play like that. If they continue and win this game uh, like they're showing they want to do, I, I don't believe there's been a bigger win for the Perry Maroons in four years I've been here. There's no doubt that this has been one of the bigger ball games for the Perry Maroon football program in a long time. Number 80, Curtis Justice on to kick. He only takes two steps, kicks it near the near sideline. Eric Mills is going to pick it up, try to take it around the right side, gets a good block from Luke Spence, but he's not going to get anywhere after that. So Perkins is going to get a chance to take over their second possession of the second half inside their own 25-yard line. Well, Perry knew very well that uh, when Mills had it, he was probably going to run and look for some place to turn downfield. They stretched that defense out there and defended well. And, uh, of course, Mills didn't get a very good uh, return on that. And uh, let's take a time out while we've got a chance here, Buck. Where do you start your morning every day? It should be at the Whistle Stop. At the Whistle Stop, you can pick up your morning paper and get a free cup of coffee from 6 to 8 every morning. Then you can come back for lunch and enjoy a fresh slice of Simple Simon's Pizza or choose from one of their many deli items, plus all the usual, such as refreshing fountain drinks and plenty of snacks to get you through the day. Whistle Stop, two locations in Perkins and one in Morrison. Whistle Stop, proud supporters of high school athletics. Payne County Bank and Perkins has been serving the Perkins community for over 100 years. Since 1898, they put their expertise to work for their customers. With convenient drive through service in a great central location, Payne County Bank is there for you. And for the Perkins Tryon Demons, Payne County Bank, 202 South Main, proud supporters of PT Athletics. Minor was the injured player on the field. Good to see that he bounces right back up, comes off to the field to an ovation from the Perry crowd. He was the recipient of the big block by number 20, Luke Spence, but... He appears to be okay. Ken McBride at quarterback for the Demons. They spread the offense out, hand off to number 20, Luke Spence, around the right side. And, John, they keep running towards that side of the defense. They're not going to get very far. Well, that's that's true. You know, we, we've seen them do, uh, do that several times. Uh, when I, I jumped out there one time and said they're stupid to run. <laughs> you know, but, uh, no, we're, we're going to continue to see that. They're just waiting for the break. But, boy, that is a tough side over there. No doubt about it. Well, a big factor that they need to be looking at right now is they've got 148 left in this quarter. While they still got the wind at the back, this may be a good time to try to get the ball downfield quick. Well, Perkins got to do something, and they've got to do it quick. McBride fakes the pitch to Spence, rolls to his right, trying to get away from Jacob Hager, and he's not going to do it. Big flag thrown over there. Don't know what we got but after the play. This could be a big flag. While well, we're waiting for the referees to make a decision, it's going to be a face mask against the Maroons. He did not signal that it was a personal foul face mask, however. It's true, and I'm glad. Uh, only, you know, you, you talk about late hit. When you see that kind of flag over there, you talk about late hits, you talk about personal fouls, you talk about... Uh, unsportsmanlike conduct, and, th and it was just a simple face mask, and I'm glad. These two teams, both of them, very good teams. Both of them want to win and playing their hearts out here tonight. Unfortunately, right now, for Perkins, uh, they just not had the, not been able to get it motivated as much as uh, Perry. Second down and six. Pitch goes to number 33, Justin Perkins. He comes around the left side, and he's met by number 25, Herb Polk and Victor Atkinson. Well, big Curtis Justice put the first hand in there and slowed him down, and then Polk and who? Atkinson. Atkinson. 
Polkin Atkins. You're just, isn't it funny how when you say a play, Atkinson's name's always in there? It's Defense odd. or offense? It is. It's an awful hard name to say. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to pronounce, hard to say. Boy, I got to say it, the Prairie Maroons are playing great. Ken McBride rolls to his right, 64 is Jeff Connect. He applies the pressure as McBride throws the ball and just out of the reach of number 88, Jason Babb. Well, you know, with, with 33 seconds left in this quarter, bringing up fourth down and six, the Perkins Demons having to punt here, if that's what they do, to Perry late here in the third quarter. I mean, it, well, it's time, it's, it's time to start recognizing the fact that time is running out in this game for Perkins. It, it, it only gets worse from here if they don't do something and do it quick. Mills split to the near side. McBride back to pass, throws it up in the air for Jeremy Mobley. And number 11, Jared Miner over there to break up the pass for the Maroons. Well, Jared Miner was over there this time for sure. We don't have any problem with that. Uh, a desperate play uh, on the part of Perkin Demons. It's a... Uh, well, John, this ball game's not over. No, it's it's fourth not over. and six on your own 25-yard line. Uh, Got to question that that decision to go for that on fourth down. Well, you right. so you, you, you could have punted with the wind and maybe got a little field position you back. You certainly have to question that. And, Sharp uh, to the left. Victor Atkinson hands off to Dion Vester. He's up the middle. Carries big number 70, James Miles, with him for a pickup of six or seven yards. Uh, you know, Buck, I'm, I'm, of course, a believer, and I think you are. You know, if you're going to let bad things happen to you, let them happen down on this end of the field, the other team's end of the field, you know, and uh, not up here and in the scoring territory. And uh, that's going to be the final play of the third quarter. The Maroons playing the spoiler role tonight as they lead the Demons 24-7. to History of the Chicken Fried Steak. A Charlie's Chicken film. Dust and coffee for breakfast. Jerky and dust for lunch. At last dusk, uh, twilight descends on the famished cowhands. Tonight, it's steak and biscuits. Cookie fires up the frying pan. Suddenly, the cranky heifer in the herd charges cookie. Steak flies willy-nilly, skips through the biscuit batter and into the hot frying pan. Bingo, Chicken Fried Steak. Mosey on order Charlie's Chicken for this crowd blazer. Charlie's Chicken Fried Steak special, just $2.99. Charlie's Chicken, Chicken Fried Steak. Check it out. Murphy's has sold China housewares, gift, and bath items to Oklahoma since 1926. With the largest China and crystal display in Oklahoma, complete housewares and cookware selection, and thousands of gift ideas, Murphy's has something for every home. Buying across the country, selling around the world, Murphy's uses the latest internet and computer technology to offer our Oklahoma customers the best selection at competitive prices. Visit Murphy's seven days a week in the store or 24 hours a day online and see what the Murphy's team has in store for your family. Downtown Stillwater, Murphy's since 1926. As you look at the top of the scoreboard, it says Daniels Field. The field happens to be named after longtime Perry resident and coach Hump Daniels. A lot of history goes behind the big rock walls of this facility. Well, this is a WPA project. Mason Bole. Mason Bole to the near side. Victor Axon, a quarterback, fumbles a snap. There's a scramble for the ball. It appears the Maroons have recovered, and they have. It's going to bring up third down and about four. Well, this this was not only a, the play to, uh, that they didn't punt was not only a big play for Perkins, but this is a big possession for the Perry Maroons. The Maroons need at third down to get that five and hold on to that ball and let that clock click off. Well, the best thing that could happen has already happened is they've got the fourth quarter in the wind. It's going to make it a whole lot tougher for that Perkins passing game. We do have a stiff breeze out of the south. That's going to be a factor Certainly for a team is. trying to catch up. Fake handoff to Russell Caldwell. Victor Axon keeps it, goes around the right side, picks up the first down, and gets down inside the 10-yard line. Well, that's what they needed. That's what they had to have. And uh, Maroons knew it. Coach Bates told them, so you got to do it. We've got to keep this ball, and we've got to get down there. Now they're down there even closer in scoring position, and they're, they stand an awful good chance right now putting this game away. That's a perfect example of using the athleticism of your quarterback. They've done it several times tonight where Victor has reversed out and faked a pitch and then taking it on a naked bootleg or taking it up the middle for big plays for the Maroons. Well, unlike some big college quarterbacks, he's a double threat. Atkinson hands off to Vester. He gets down inside the five-yard line. Be second down and goal. It's not a pretty picture if you're a 
Perkins Demon fan. All the excitement's on this side of the field over here at Daniels Field with the Perry Maroons, who have shocked everybody, I think, except themselves. They knew they were they're going to play well. They knew what kind of team they had, and they came in here, and they've demonstrated it so far. And they can put this game away right here, Buck. 22, Deion Vester over the middle, and he's in again for a touchdown. 10-22 left in the fourth quarter. Perry now on top, 30-7. To well, that's what they wanted. That's what they needed. That's what they were told to get by Coach Bates, and they did it. Went down and scored. Now they're going to go for the extra point. Get this score up one more point. And maybe, Victor just maybe, put it away. Victor Atkinson attempts it again. And finally tonight, the Maroons convert on an extra point attempt. With 10-22 left in the fourth quarter, the Perry Maroons lead the Perkins Demons 31-7. Payne County Bank and Perkins has been serving the Perkins community for over 100 years. Since 1898, they put their expertise to work for their customers. With convenient drive through service in a great central location, Payne County Bank is there for you. And for the Perkins Tryon Demons, Payne County Bank, 202 South Main, proud supporters of PT Athletics. Mr. C shows their pride in the Perry Maroons every day at the corner of 15th and Fur. Mr. C's, where easy access, quick service, and a great staff of friendly employees provide quality products. Fill up 66 gasoline from 12 pumps. Great fresh food from the deli, from snacks to dinners, including their famous roasted chicken and succulent barbecue ribs. Even a first bank of Perry ATM. From magazines and milk to cold drinks and Perry Maroon pep rallies, you'll find it all at Perry's number one convenience store. 24 hours a day, Mr. C's where Perry Pride is number one. 10-22 left in the fourth quarter. Perry on to kick the ensuing kickoff after the Dion Vester four-yard touchdown scamper. The Maroons now lead 31-7. Well, 31-7 is the score, and this game is being brought to you on the Perry side by one of our great sponsors, Mr. C's. Easy access to the corner of 15th and Fur. They got all those great Phillips 66 products. They got 12 pumps of pumping down there. Great folks, friendly employees. You can buy those baby back ribs, the taco salads, gizzards, liver, El Cerritos, great roasted chicken. It's just a fine place. They got two 12-packs of Pepsi products, only $4.95 today. Now get in there, all you Perry fans, You tell them you heard their commercial. They're going to give you that free $4 car wash, and you're certainly going to need it this weekend or Monday, so be sure and go in and say, I heard your broadcast. I want that free car wash. Make up for this rainy weather that's piled of dirt on my car. Go see them at Mr. C's. We've had a reverse roll in kickers this quarter as uh, number 80 Curtis Justice is kicking off. He was the extra point man. Now Victor Atkins is the extra point man. And he, Curtis Justice has replaced Victor Atkinson on the kickoff. So, well, a little, I guess, uh, a little turnaround, a little uh, got to do something magic. different, I guess. Yeah. Can't make an extra point, couldn't get a very good kickoff, so you just trade your kickers and got the extra point. I guess the kickoff's effective. Well, when you when you lead in the ball game 31 to seven, we're in the fourth quarter. You weren't expected to win by a margin. If you did, uh, you can do anything. You can't do any wrong. You know, hey, uh, play those yeah. players. Let those new shirts in there. Even. Got to give a lot of credit to the Maroon coaching staff. Of course, head coach Mark Bates. He's assisted by volunteer assistant Heath Abercrombie, Tim Beach, and Tom Betch and Scott Chenoweth. Defensive coordinator Chris Choate, Damon Mormon, Robbie Scheller, offensive coordinator, and Danny Williams and Chad Wilson. Luke Spence takes the handoff, goes around the left side. He steps out of bounds on about the 35-yard line, but it's good enough to pick up a Perkins first down. Well, he ran to the short side. He uh, got around the corner. Uh, if, if it had gone to the long side and worked out that well, he'd still be going. But ran to the short side. Anyway, he got some yards, moved the change, and that's what, you know, it's late in the game, but they've got to do it. I was mentioning that coaching staff. John, of course, we know a lot of them real well. They've... Uh, they may have been the only ones in the entire district that believed they had a chance to win tonight. They took that belief and put it in their players, and they came out and put 31 points on the Demons. You bet. Well, let's, let me. Well, no gain there. Let me let me say something real quick, Buck. Uh, even though uh, uh, Perry has been the uh, a dominant force here in this game tonight, and a very important game to both Perkins and Perry, who'd win this game tonight. Set, take nothing away from Perkins. We got a lot of season left here. Uh, Perkins is going to play the easy side, what we thought was the easy side. It may not be. And uh, Perry's going into the heavy side. So a lot of things can still happen. But a... Ken McBride back to pass. There's that. 
The ball is intercepted on the plate. Ken McBride was hit and hit hard by number 55, Tuff Alstrom. That caused, excuse me, that's number 64, Jeff Connect, who hit the quarterback, caused the throw to be offline. It was intercepted quick by the Maroon defense. A big big turnover, a big turnover in this. Uh, At at this point right now, I'm close to singing the song, but uh, everything's gone right for Perry. They played a real game. When you you play tough, good things happen to you. Good things happen to good teams. Not that you need it, but you got my permission. Thank you. Dion Vester runs around the left side, gets a block from David Sharp, gets knocked out of bounds by number 11, Jeremy Mobley. Well, I don't want to say it, but I, uh, especially on a game like this where we want to see both these teams do well, we want to see them both win, you know, an impossibility. We want to root for both of these teams, and, and, and we still do. They're great teams. Good, two good teams came out here match night, but it's over. Uh, turn out the lights, folks. Two good Perry coaching Maroons, staff. The Perry too. Maroons have won a, have a great victory here tonight at Daniels Field. And that comes with 9.05 left in the fourth quarter. Victor Axton still at quarterback. Hands off to Dion Vester. Breaks one tackle. Can't get away from Anthony Broussard, though. He's going to pick up four yards on the play. Well, you know, we get a good, uh, a good idea, a good view, I should say. We get a good view of the game up here and seeing what has happened. We watched our friend Buddy Smith from the News Star a while ago from the Stillwater News Press, I should say, the Stillwater News Press, as he was up here editing on the computer his pictures he's taken. Boy, they got some great pictures and shows what's going on down on that field. Look for them in the Stillwater News Press. Times have gotten much easier over the years, haven't they? They have. They have. <laughs> he didn't have to develop it or anything. No. He just pulled it up the computer, That's and right. we saw 48 just like that. That's right. Well, all those good newspapers have that now. All good newspapers have that now. <laughs> Third down and four. Upcoming for the Maroon offense with 8.05. The clock's running. Number 88, Mason Bole split to the left. Handoff goes to Vester once again over the left side. And I'm sticking with that bread and butter play, at least the bread and butter play for this week. Keep the clock running is what I'm Coach talking. Mark Bates has said. And that it's doing. While I'm talking about the story and the pictures that will appear in tomorrow's Stillwater News Press of this game, folks, upstairs is Patrick Prince. He's the sports writer covering this game for the Stillwater News Press. Be sure and read his story in tomorrow's issue. Atkinson hands off to Vester once again on the fourth down play. He appears to have the first down, and he does. So the clock will continue run once the chains are set. The Maroons are in control now, and they've been in control all night. Well, I've been sitting here listening to the fat lady sing while you're talking. The fat lady is getting ready to bellow it out. Yeah, and while we got a chance, won't you tell them where that fat lady ate? Fat lady ate it. Come back today. <laughs> <to me. laughs> and she's going to sing a song. In a minute. <coughs> 22, that- Dion Vester once again gets a handoff. He gets down inside the five-yard line. It'll be second down. I don't know. It looks like they can get a first down if they can get the ball placed on about well, the four-inch line. Of course, the only thing on their mind right now is touchdown. And, and look at the look at the position for Coach Bates is in. Who do you give it to? You give it to Vester, you give it to Atkinson, or you give it to Russell Caldwell? Hey, I, I'd hate to have to make those choices. <laughs> How bad that must be. I'm, t- I'm saying Dion Vester's <laughs> getting it again. Well, he did. Jumps over one tackler, gets down near the goal line. No signal from the referees. He's going to be hit, stopped short. We could have a timeout for measurement, though. Well, we'll see what they do. Have called a jet. It's close down there. Head referee nope. says no. He winds the clock. He wants to play ball. Not only is it third down and goal, it's third down and short. That's right. Four, could, David Sharp comes to the near side. First down here. Handoff goes to, I believe it was Dion Vester. Sounds good to me. And it was Dion Vester with 6.08 left. Perry scores again. Well, if you put an ear out there now over the crowd, you can hear it. <clears throat> the fat lady is singing. This game is long over. If We're it's over, playing. what are we going to talk about for the next well, six minutes? We'll, we'll read something. <laughs> <laughs> 
I got a lot of people to tell you about. Victor Atkinson back on the field to attempt the extra point. Kick is up, gets off a good kick, and it's good once again. 38 to seven, Perry on top with 6.08 left in the fourth quarter. We'll come back after these messages. 74 years, generations of Oklahomans have enjoyed one of the state's best eating places, the Comeback Cafe in Perry. At the same location on the town square since day one, you can enjoy breakfast, lunch, or dinner. From large fluffy pancakes to flame cooked steaks, from oversized char grilled hamburgers to original recipe Mexican food, generations of Perry Maroons have enjoyed the great food at the Comeback, and you will also make your selection for the vast menu or the posted daily specials. The friendly staff is ready to serve you the delicious cooking of the famous Comeback Cafe. Bye. Where do you start your morning every day? It should be at the Whistle Stop. At the Whistle Stop, you can pick up your morning paper and get a free cup of coffee from 6 to 8 every morning. Then you can come back for lunch and enjoy a fresh slice of Simple Simon's Pizza or choose from one of their many deli items. Plus all the usual, such as refreshing fountain drinks and plenty of snacks to get you through the day. Whistle Stop, two locations in Perkins and one in Morrison. Whistle Stop, proud supporters of high school athletics. Let me tell you about some of our Perkins sponsors. The Whistle Stop in Perkins. Free coffee in the morning. Two locations in Perkins. One in Morrison. Home of Symbol Simon's Pizza. Deli items. All the refreshments you need. Fill up your vehicle and yourself. And hey, down in Payne County Bank. They've been serving Payne County and surrounding counties for over 100 years. Since 1898. They've been in Perkins putting the expertise to work for their clients at 202 South Main. You can't miss it. A convenient drive through and great people. That's at Payne County Bank. Then visit Frontier Lanes. Hey, bowling at its finest. Whether you're a league bowler or a recreational bowler, Frontier Lanes is just right for you. Ernie and his staff make sure that everyone has a good time, even the kiddos. Leagues are forming now for all ages. Frontier Lanes in Stillwater. I've got time to tell you about Murphy's Potpourri also, located in downtown Stillwater. Murphy says everything you need to get ready for the holidays, including Halloween. They have all the accessories for your baking duties during the holiday seasons, and Terry and his knowledgeable staff are ready to help you plan all of your fall entertainment needs. They're located in downtown Stillwater. Curtis Justice on once again to kick for the Maroons. Back to receive for Perkins is number 20, Luke Spence, and number 10, Eric Mills. Another short kick towards the far sideline. Mills will fill this one on one hop. Cut it up the middle, looking for some running room. Can't find it. He's going to be tackled on his own 32-yard line. Well, we're uh, going to play now. We're just going to play a little football and look down what we'll see now out of either one of these teams. Uh, Perry's, of course, going out there now, just as relaxed as they can be. Remember Perkins the, is going to be in the desperation set. Remember the Pekoska game? It I didn't remember. look like it in the first half, but it looks a lot like it right now. True, true words were never spoken. Well, maybe so. Don't know. Coach Bates down there, still barking out to his Maroons what he wants to do to hold on to this game. He wants to hold on to it, and he wants to hold on to it bad. Mobley and Mills split to the near side. Pass goes to Mills, gets a block on Atkinson from Mobley, gets across the line of scrimmage, and the Perry Maroons just gain tackle him after a gain of three. Well, Eric just couldn't make it. There's too many defenders out there, and you just make what you got, and then you just get ready to get hit. Leading the way for the Maroons all you is can number do. eight, Ryan Corn. Number 25, Herb Ryan Hill. Korn. We saw him last year playing quarterback on the varsity on the second team. Who was quarterback for Perry last year? Was that Engel? Brandon Engel. Yeah, Brandon Engel. Name from the past. McBride fakes to Spence, rolls to his left. He's trying to outrun tough Alstrom and Jeff Connect. He throws it up for grabs. Victor Atkinson intercepts it. Another turnover for the Perkins Demon offense. Well, there's a way we call it, Buck. We talked about it all year long. When you get desperation plays, when you start throwing things in desperation, trying to do something that you haven't done the whole game, bad things happen. There's one of them right there. It's great for the Perry Maroons, bad for the Perkins Demons. It's just going to drive another nail into their coffin. You know, one good way, John, to, to say that the ball game is over is when the uh, Chris Cho, good friend of mine, waving at us, the defensive coordinators for the Perry Maroons, he told me before the game, Look out, and he was right. His defense stepped up to the plate tonight. You bet. Well, no surprise to the per uh, Perry fans. A big surprise to the Perkins fans. Number 22, Dion Vester takes the ball, goes around the outside. He's not going to get away from the defensive end, though. That's number 88, Jason Babb bringing him down. 
You'll see a lot of these Perry Maroons, they come around Mr. C's. That's Mr. Convenience in Perry, located at 15th and Fur. Mr. C's, one of our great sponsors here tonight. Hey, they've got all that great roasted chicken. Just a great place. Good, friendly employees. They know everybody. Just walk in and introduce yourself if you don't know them and say, hey, I'm here to get my free car wash. I saw your commercial. They'll give you a $4 super car wash absolutely free at Mr. C's. What I was trying to say is, you know when the game is over, when the coaches come down from the press box and take their headsets off and just call stuff from the sideline. But, and wave at us as they go by. And wave at us <laughs> excitedly as they are, and they should be, because with 426 left, Perry Maroons on top, 38-7. to seven. Well, let's hand it to them. The Perry Maroons have done a marvelous job here tonight. They demand the respect. We hadn't seen them play. We didn't know who they, uh, what kind of teams they were playing. We knew they were coming home with victories, and uh, we didn't know what to, what to expect here tonight. But they've shown us they're everything that everybody told us they were, and Perkins knows it for sure. They've definitely gained the respect of not only these two broadcasters, but that entire that entire crowd on the other side is also. Uh, seeing what the Perry Maroons have come to be in the last three years. Yeah, well, I, I guarantee you, Coach Gether and his his uh, Perkins Demons, they have a great respect for this Perry team, too. They'll go home tonight knowing they played a ball game, knowing they lost to a good team, and they'll just, uh, they, you know, they'll get themselves together and get ready to go after all the teams that are on the reigning part of theirs. Both teams have got a long dredge, yeah. Perkins holds. It's fourth down and 10. Curtis Justice on the punt. Gets off a directional punt away from Mills, goes into the end zone, so it'll be placed at the 20-yard line. Let me tell you about the Comeback Cafe one more time before we take a break. Comeback Cafe. Go in there, eat breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They're open at 5 o'clock in the morning. Hey, you'll enjoy it. Go in there where all your friends gather. There's a group that gathers every morning at 9 o'clock at that front table up down there. You know, good friends of ours. Well, Joe Sewell and Niels Anderson, I'm telling you, those guys in there, they'll, they'll keep you entertained. Just go in and join them. Sit out at their table and tell them to buy you a cup of coffee. A lot of substitutions coming in here late for the Maroons. You weren't ready for me to quit, were you? Do you want me to answer that? <laughs> Handoff goes to Luke Spence. Perry in their prevent defense. Spence picks up nine yards on the play. Be second down and one. Well, I've got to say this, and, and uh, the Perkins fans will know exactly what I'm saying. Coach Grother will know exactly what I'm saying. This is not the same team for Perkins that we've seen play the last, uh, well, our two broadcasts down there, and that went out and beat Cushing, beat Pawnee, beat Pahuska. It's a down night for them. Well, we were here early, and we were here when the Perkins team got here, and when they came onto the field, it seemed to be kind of dead. Uh, they got here, it seemed like a little late, later than normal anyway. Uh, Perry team was already almost finished stretching before Perkins uh, shows up and they come out and walk on the field. It seems kind of dead and that's the way they played tonight, dead. Well, and, and the funny thing is, I didn't point it out earlier, but I wasn't meant to. You know, these teams are no strangers to one another, even though they don't, you know, they haven't played football against one another in years. But you take these two teams, they play baseball, they wrestle together. These guys know one another and, uh, you know, there's no... For them, these are good friends out there that they're losing to or winning from. The lone freshman for the Perry Maroons, 24, or excuse me, uh, Jeff Balderson now into the game, as, as are others. Uh, Jeff Balderson's number 21. Number four, David Sharp in there on defense. Still some starters in there. Big number 77, Mike Kelly seeing his first action of the ball game. Well, I'm seeing something out there I really like. I see some of the Perry Maroons patting the uh, Perkins players on the back and, and vice versa. These guys are talking to one another friendly. I mean, they know the game's over, and they're still able out there. They're not going to get in one of these heated I hate you stuff. It's good, it's good friendship out there, good sportsmanship. Handoff goes to Spence. He comes around the right side. Player for Perkins, a name we don't usually get to mention, number 22, Rudy Darrow. In at receiver. Hey, Luke doesn't know the game's over. He's out there scrapping for everything in the world. Good ball player. Luke Spence, we've seen him do some great things this year. Saw Chris Friday go onto the field for the Maroons. Number 11s are guarding one another out here. McBride rolls to his left. He's going to be sacked. For a seven-yard loss, he stays in bounds. That'll keep the clock running. John, I've seen that happen so much this year, not only in the broadcast that we've done, but other games I've seen. Coaches, for some reason, want to roll their quarterbacks 
away from their strong arm. It's a whole lot harder to throw across your body than it is coming to the near. Of course it the is. other side. And we've, we've commented on that. But you know, he said he went, uh, stayed in bounds and the clock is running. Curtis Justice held him in bounds and made sure he stayed in bounds. Quite a deal. Quite a game. Third down and 13 for the Demon offense. McBride back to pass, looks for number 22. That's Rudy Darrow. He catches the ball, probably his first catch of the season. That's the first time I've seen him all season. <laughs> Rudy is a five foot one, 110 pound junior. Got that shiny uniform. It's not shiny anymore. Nope, nope. that's something the, he can be proud of. Yeah, you bet. Took that off, got a good reception, made some yards against the tough Perry Maroons. Lee Madden now in on defense. Rudy Darrow goes in motion. McBride back to pass. Lost it up for Darrow again. He catches it, gets the first down, tries to get out of bounds, doesn't get there. But the clock will stop while they move the chains. 13 seconds left in the ball game. Perry on top, 38 to 7. Referee starts the clock. That's probably going to be the last play of the ball game, and it appears it's going to be as the Perkins coaches aren't sending in a play. So Perry, believe it or not, comes in to Daniels Field tonight, undefeated in district play, and they're going to leave tonight still undefeated in district play. And, John, no matter how you look at it, this is an upset. Well, it certainly is an upset, and we might as well say it now. Uh, no one, uh, you know, outside of the Perry fans and the Perkins fans could have predicted what was going to happen here tonight. Now, both of them were, of course, high on their teams, but uh, around the state, of course, the day that Oklahoma predict, predicted that Perkins would run away with this game, and I think uh, that probably uh, the average uh, uh, fan would have said, yes, that's what's going to happen. Perkins is going to do this, but that didn't take place. We got a victory out here, got a win, and uh, Perry got a very good win, a respected win. There are the Bringle brothers. <laughs> the Bringle brothers have been telling me all day that the Perry Maroons were going to run away with this game. They are right again. I've seen them walk out of there a few times without paying too. Those are good comeback <laughs> customers. And they're pointing to me saying, hey, we told you so. Proud bunch of Perry Maroons. That's oh. just like the Texas OU games. <laughs> says. There's coach, baseball coach right here coming by. We've got them all. Hey, uh, it, was, it was just a, it, for, for the Perry Maroons, it was a great game. It was an excellent Absolutely, game. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Perry came in tonight with the attitude that they were going to pull something special, do something special. They did it, and they not. it wasn't even close, John. This game was, uh, you know, Perry dominated from the opening kickoff all the way to the last second. Okay, we said coming into this game it was important. It is an important game. It's a big game. And the Perry Maroons won it. That puts them ahead in the district. By They're undefeated in the district. Now, we got to look down the road. Here goes Perkins with five more or four more games left in district play. Three more, I'm sorry, three more games in district play. Here go the Perry Maroons with three more play uh, in the district play. Uh, both of them have different schedules. Where you know, like I say, now nobody's going to be more surprised right now to hear this score than Pahuska and Newkirk and Pawnee. Well, there's no doubt about that because uh, really, I mean, I don't know how you want to look at it. Perry beats probably the best team in the district that we've seen this far. And we can say that because we've seen the top five teams in the district right. play now. And uh, Perry handled them pretty well. So, yeah, you're right. If those other three teams are paying any attention at all, they've got to step up and take notice of the Perry Maroon football program as they're getting this thing turned around. Well, let's do this. Let's take, a, let's get a chance to take our breaths here and come back and, and try to summarize this game as best we can. We can summarize by saying it was a great victory. But let's take this break. Mr. C shows their pride in the Perry Maroons every day at the corner of 15th and Fur. Mr. C's, where easy access, quick service, and a great staff of friendly employees provide quality products. Fill up 66 gasoline from 12 pumps, great fresh food from the deli, from snacks to dinners, including their famous roasted chicken and succulent barbecue ribs. Even a First Bank of Perry ATM. From magazines and milk to cold drinks and Perry Maroon pep rallies, you'll find it all at Perry's number one convenience store. 24 hours a day, Mr. C where Perry Pride is number one. It's time once again to dust off that old bowling ball, break out the shoes, and try your hand at bowling. Bowling's great fun for the entire family, and you and your family are invited to Frontier Lanes for all the fun. Whether you're a recreational bowler or more on the competitive side, Frontier Lanes is for you. Come have a great time, and don't forget Frontier Lanes has a wonderful snack bar to keep you refreshed during your visit. And they have pool tables as well. 
for over 40 years of fun, Frontier Lanes. Call 372-8584 for more information. Now we're back. We're back at Daniels Field. Uh, well, Buck, next week we will be broadcasting the Perkins game. Uh, we will be at home with Perkins playing mounds, and Perry goes on the road, right? That's correct. As we look on the field, we see future cheerleader, the daughter of head coach Mark Bates, on the field running around. You know, that's the secondary story here tonight is the Perry Maroons come out and dominate from the opening kickoff. They turn around and win this game 38-7. to They improve to 5-2 and two on the year. First time that they've been that far above 500 in, since we've been around anyway. And uh, more importantly, they improved to 4-0 oh in district play. Well, I was mistaken. Perry's at home next week. It's senior night, and they play Pawnee right here at Daniels Field. But we will be at Perkins with a broadcast on the Perkins home game. But here's where I'm going to shock everybody. This was a special broadcast here for Perry, the Perry game here tonight. But we may be doing more broadcast of Perry down the road. There's no doubt. Uh, we've talked to the general manager, and uh, we're also going to do some basketball games, I believe. We're going to try to cover Perkins and Perry as much as we can. We look forward to that. Uh, Perry once again pulls off the upset, at least an upset to most people across the state. Maybe not an upset to the Perry football team and the Perry coaches, but uh, they definitely earned my respect tonight. Well, it sure does. And by the way, we, uh, you know, when you've got uh, Perry, uh, pardon me, Perkins of Pahuska rated in the top ten, uh, Perkins the number one team in the district uh, in all respects, and Perry uh, takes them out as handily as they did, 38-7. to seven. Uh, That's got to be an upset, Buck. It was an upset, and there's no doubt about it. But it was a great victory for the Perry Maroons. They are real. We have seen it uh, with our own eyes. Uh, they, do, they command the respect, and I'm certain they're going to get it. Well, there's no doubt about that, and uh, we're going to take one more break. When we come back, we're going to wrap it up from Daniels Field in Perry, Oklahoma. We did not get an opportunity to talk to high school band director Sandy Hinches, but they earned a special honor this week. John, won't you tell us what that was? Well, they were selected as uh, one of the top 100 schools in the nation for music education. We've known a long time that they've had a great band. Sandy Hinches, is, uh, the band program here at Perry is a fantastic program. Great band members. They win at competition all the time. They won something last week. They're going to competition next week. And I'm kind of ad-libbing that because I didn't read all the details and Sandy was going to tell us. But anyway, I know for a fact that they were selected as one of the 100 best t uh, schools in the nation for music education. Quite an award in itself. Now, the band is planning a trip. I don't know the dates. They're going to New York City. I think the school board has already devoted last time in school board meeting last week to grant them permission to go to New York City. The only problem is, like most school trips, they got to raise some funds. I can't tell you how they're going to raise the funds. I can't tell you what to do, but I know you'll want to donate, you Perry fans or want to donate to the band uh, fund to send the band, this great Perry band, to on their trip to New York City whenever it is, and it's coming up you know, probably this summer. But at any rate, they need the money, and they need it now. So the best thing I can tell you is just contact the school, contact the band director, Sandy Hinges, contact the superintendent, contact the principal, contact anybody at Perry High School, and tell them you want to donate to send this great Perry Maroon band to New York City. We've seen a lot of bands in our time broadcasting, a lot of different bands from other schools, and there's no doubt the Perry Maroons have the best band that we have seen. They're led by band director Sandy Hinches. She's assisted by Jim Parham, and the drum major is Lindsey Keith. But uh, as they continue to go to contests, we wish them the best of luck. If you're just uh, tuning in, you're a little late. You missed the upset. The Perry Maroons win 38-7. to I'm Buck King for John Dawson. We'll see you next week at Perkins. Good night. We now return to our regularly scheduled programming already in progress. <laughs>